I think we'll call a meeting to order, 601. And uh, our chair is going to be a bit late getting here, but so we're going to get started with Mr. Kennard. Oh, do, was that first? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Those in favor? Hi. Now you're nice. You kind of caught me off guard here. Is it all right if I stand up just so I can of look? Of course, yeah. Behind. I think I have a <laughs> yep, Jamie Canardi, I'm the superintendent of schools at the White River Valley Supervisory Union. I'm here tonight to provide a brief uh, overview and presentation of the board approved budget that you'll be considering um, on the Monday evening prior to town meeting. And also just to give folks an update on Act 127, which it was a bill that was passed in the spring of 2022 that you've been reading a lot about or hearing about in the news. And I'll talk about what provisions of that bill are impacting the White River Unified District. And in general, the good news is for White River Unified District that that bill did provide, and I'll show you how here in a minute, uh, additional tax capacity without impacting Royalton or Bethel voters in order to generate that tax capacity, which was what that was in the heart of the bill, okay? Is to provide uh, rural districts like ours who have actually quite a high rate of free and reduced lunch population of students that we serve to increase the ability to add additional supports to best serve our kids without having to increase local taxes to do so. Um, the bad news as I go through this report is gonna be that your common level of assessment, and I'll show you how, what that all means here in a minute, drops significantly in Bethel and in Royalton. So the tax increase this year is, gener is being generated due to that common level of assessment not actually the equalized tax rate due to the local student school district budget. Okay. I did have a slideshow. I'm working on it. Great. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying. I'm technically challenged tonight for some reason. Yeah. Okay. I've been doing this for a while and it's always been the common level of appraisal. Not assessment. It's Just appraisal. Okay. I'm sorry. No, I'm not. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. For... <laughs> um, so as the presentation is getting ready to go on, I'll just talk to you a little bit about uh, what changes we need to budget uh, for Why positions. So uh, and I think some of you have already started to receive your mailers, is yeah. what I was just told. Yeah. So this is all in there as well. But the first one is... Um, we did add a 1.0 FTE uh, for um, tech education. Um, and so right now we have a 1.0 FTE that we share across our middle and high school campuses. The high school enrollment is actually up 24 students this year, which is great. And a majority of those students are tuition students tuitioning into our district from uh, local choice districts. And so the idea is to be able to provide full-time tech education and makerspace like hands-on learning for our students at the middle and high school throughout the entire day. Right now it's only offered at the middle school first thing in the morning and then that teacher travels over to Royalton. And so we want to be able to provide that opportunity across the uh, continuum of the day at, at both campuses. We increased uh, 0.4 FTE and in intervention and we'll do some reassigning to make certain that our middle school has a full-time math interventionist. Um, right now, we have a paraprofessional doing a really nice job. We want to bring a full-time licensed math interventionist in place at our middle school here in Bethel. We budgeted for, that one's not the one, but. Um, this is the one you sent. Oh, wait, no, it's not. No, it's not. Never, never mind. Okay, this is, um, I know it's one Gene said. The, where you're budgeting for a 1.0 across both campuses, a social worker to help provide additional supports for our kids, but also our families and link them up with resources that are provided via the families and essentially with a real focus on making certain we're holding our community partners accountable 
to best supporting our families. So when you say community partners, what are those? Claire Martin Center, uh, Department of Children and Families, other folks that sit down at the table with us to really make certain that those plans are being followed through and that our families are getting the supports that those other organizations are able to provide them. Sorry. That's the one. Yeah, no, we're sorry good. About that. You're good. I'm, in, I'm on slide one still right. right now. Thank God. We also budgeted for a full time administrative assistant to support the high school guidance office. So, what, you're, what you'll find is that our high school enrollment now is up to the last two uh, cohorts. We're actually at 60 kids uh, at the high school, which is a significant increase, and a majority of that increase is actually coming from students choosing to attend our high school now via the Supervisory Union uh, Choice District. So that's Rochester Stockbridge students. We have Granville Hancock students at our high school now. First branch for the first time and a very, very long time, that's Chelsea Tumbridge, sent more kids to our high school than any of the other surrounding um, independent or public schools. So, and that is each one of those students uh, is next year $19,900 in revenue, okay? So that's what the announced tuition is for next year. And you'll see in your, in your budget when you look in the book that we're budgeting for 45 tuition students. Our sense, we are budgeting conservatively there. Our hope is that that number actually is more like 55 students for next year. You may say, Jamie, then why didn't you budget 55? When we got in trouble financially in the past, one of the things that I was concerned about is that we were sometimes overstating revenue in those tuitions. And as a school district, I can't sell things, meaning I can't just generate revenue. And so we need to make certain we get that revenue right. And so some of the surpluses you've been seeing is actually we've been able to generate some more revenue because we've had more kids choose to come to us than what we budgeted. As we start to feel better about what those figures are and those kids are staying with us for a full year, we'll start to budget closer to the number. But right now we are budgeting possibly 10 students under, or about 190,000, all right? Um, but it'll ensure that we're not running a, a, a deficit, that we will continue to run uh, budgets that are in the black. We got some elementary uh, classroom instructional materials specifically for literacy in this budget as we look to really shift and ensure that we're doing a good job with the science of reading, which is essentially making certain that we are doing a good job in teaching our kids phonics and phonemic awareness. Um, and then finally, we partnered with Tri-Valley Transit to provide us some after-school transportation in midday transportation. For our students, it's a really good bang for the buck for us to be partnering with public transportation. It's actually how students get to us right now from Granville Hancock area uh, over to our high school. The timing works for those routes. Um, and also we have a commuter bus coming to us from Stratford. We actually have a couple of tuition students from Stratford now choosing our high school. So that's what the changes in the expenditure budget were. Uh, the next slide, it breaks down the expenditure budget. Our budget's up 10.9% overall. What are the driving factors for that? I'll tell you one of the biggest ones is health insurance for us in, in our school systems across the state are up 16.4%. Um, and just a reminder for folks that that is a statewide bargain contract. Um, and so health insurance is bargained statewide. Um, and so we have no control in regards to where the, that, those premiums get set. Um, the, the other thing is, of course, um, budget increases for staff. Our, our faculty right now, their budget increase is just over 4% increase for next year. And for our support staff, it's about 6 to 7%, depending on what type of professional development they do. Um, and then in this slide, you'll see our equalized pupil our rate went up significantly. And that was due to Act 127 because we count pupils differently now. And the big generator for increased pupils for us, so for next year, that divider for us is up to 1,095.42. So we actually, just from last year to this year in long-term weighted pupils, we gained 64.74. That's good because it's a divider, and I'll show you how that mechanism works here in a minute, but as that number goes up and we hold spending the same, your equalized tax rate goes down. 
So that's a good thing. Um, and so next slide. Oh, so our per pupil spending is 11950 and 42 cents. Don't compare that to last year's if you look in your book because it's a whole different funding formula. They changed how the pupils were weighted. All right, so what, I would, what we are providing to you is what your per pupil spending would have been last year with the long-term weighted figure. Um, and so last year would have been 11,32068, dollars and now you're spending 11,950.42. and 42 cents. All right, so the change was 629.74. All right, Nick, what's that? The increased spending. So it's, yeah, so that is a figure based purely off of um, what we're spending minus local revenues. And I'll have a, sh uh, a thing to break it down here in a minute, divided by your per pupils. And that's how you get your per so pupils. It's spending. More accurate than the formula which you were using before. Is the one in the yes. Okay. So what is Act 127? There's a lot of provisions in Act 127 currently in law. Montpelier is looking to revise Act 127 um, within the next two weeks. And the piece that they're really focusing on actually is nothing to do with how we budgeted at the White River Unified District. There is a uh, per pupil ceiling in the bill currently that if districts spend less than 10% increase in their per pupil cost, that they're able to benefit from a, by a 5% tax cap on their equalized tax rate. Okay, well, if you're spending more than 5% locally, that money has to come from somewhere. Meaning if another district's spending more than their equalized tax rate, that 5% cap, which districts are, that money has to come from the Ed Fund. We have a statewide Ed Fund. So the way that money was being generated was, there's a, a figure called the yield, which I'll talk to you about in a minute. When that yield number drops, what it's doing is it's increasing taxes across the state. Meaning, if a district north of here was spending the equivalent of, they're underneath this 10% ceiling cap per pupil, but their actual tax rate should have been 8%, but they're capped at 5%, that remaining 3% came partially from you in White River Unified District, okay? Because the, when the yield drops, everyone across the state pays more in taxes. And you were well under the cap. Your equalized tax rate's actually down three cents. Your, your equalized tax rate's not close to 5% increase. So every time in White River Unified District that that yield drops, your taxes go up, no matter what we do. And it's really hard for us to change our budget here locally to make a difference. So the last time, we got a figure in December 1 about where the yield was projected to be, and then we got a new updated figure in early January. It dropped, it, it increased your, ta the yield dropped to a level that it increased your taxes by four cents, okay? It, it takes us to either increase revenue or cut expenses over just over 100,000 to get a penny. All right, so that change of what that yield meant 400,000 and change that we were gonna have to either cut from our budget or generate more revenue to make up that difference. The good news for you in White River Unified District is that the, the changes that they're suggesting that they're gonna take action on should result in your yield increasing again. So by the end of the presentation, I'm gonna talk to you about if it goes to where they think it's gonna go because Spending across the state's gonna go down. Specifically of those districts that spent more than what they were paying on the equalized tax rate, if they take and pull money out of their expenditure budgets, I'll show you where that yield is projected to be and what it actually means is really good things for our local tax rates in Bethel and Royalton, all right? I'll show you what they currently are now and if they take action, what, what we're projecting they will be. But the big thing for you in 127 is your per pupil is increased because the way that we, we count a student now has changed. Students who are served via English language learners, like English as a second language, 
they now count for like two and a quarter students, okay, of that per pupils that I talked to you about. Students who are served via free and reduced lunch count for an additional third of a student. So there's changes in the weighting factors that weren't there prior. And you may say, Jamie, why is that? Well, there's re what has happened is, is that they've recognized that we need more resources to serve students who are maybe coming from generational poverty over time, right? And we need to get additional supports in place. So they changed the way that they figure these weights to allow districts who haven't been able to generate revenue locally to do that work in order to do so. Hence, why we have put a social worker in. We are able to do that and your, and your equalized tax rate is not going up. You're still down three cents. All right, so uh, next slide. This is all on our SU website. You can find this thing on F-127. I've broken out what is in our control. It's also in your mailer and what's not. Everything in the red, we don't control locally. Those are all figures that are set up in Montpelier, like the yield, which I was talking about, okay? What our per pupil calculations are, those are provided to us by the agency of Ed. All right, what we really have control over is our general budget, making certain we have a good capital plan. Um, and, and Chris is on the facilities committee. We've been working quite hard at the White River Unified District to have a plan that we're putting money away and that we're able to do improvements and that we're not gonna be in position to have to go to bond for deferred maintenance, okay? That's been a huge goal for us across the supervisory union. It's why we're gonna ask you to allow us to put a big chunk of our surplus funds into capital reserve so that we continue to build up our reserve funds. And I'll remind you, we just did $1.6 million worth of work at Bethel, redoing the heating system that was failed without needing to go to bond. And we were able to do that by grant funding, by tapping into our, our facilities fund, and through some performance contracting that we did. All right, so that was a big deal that we didn't have to bond in order to do that. Um, so how do we get the tax rate? Next slide, just to remind you, it's broken down of per pupil spending. Well, Jamie, what's that? It's our budget minus our revenues. Jamie, what is revenues? For us, for you and Rudd, it's really your revenues are title funding, okay, which are federal grants to help to support our interventionist. All right, so those count as local revenues. It's also students that we receive via tuition. All right, that's the biggest chunk of your local revenues. All right, that is then divided through by your equalized pupils. And that's that 1,000 and, and, what did I tell you? Your, your pupils is 1,095.42. So we take your, act, so that, that spending is called Act 68 education spending. Once you deduct your revenues from it, you have an Act 68 spending of 13,090,728, and then we divide that through by your pupils, which is 1,095.42, and we get the per pupil spending of 11,950.42, okay? After that, we have to get to the equalized tax rate. That's your per pupil spending divided by the yield. So when that yield drops, when you heard me talk about it dropping, that increases your equalized tax rate. When the yield increases, then that equalized tax rate is going to go down because it's a divide. Okay? And so what you have in your books is the lowest yield that has been sent projected to us thus far. All right? I expect that the yield's actually going to go up because I think that spending is going to go down across the state over the next month. You may say, Jamie, how's, why is that? I believe that budgets will go down in some places. Um, I also believe that people are gonna amend their budgets from the floor when that cap provision's taken off and there's no more cap. Um, and so the final tax rate though is the equalized tax rate divided by the common level of appraisal, okay? That is, that was not good news for us, like I said. And it was not just in White River Unified District, it was in every district across the supervisory union. And I would say it's in 90% of the towns across the state 
that the common level of appraisal dropped a great deal. And not to go into all the details tonight, because I know you have a lot to cover, um, the common level of appraisal is dropping because assessments um, haven't been done in quite some time and or were delayed due to COVID in a lot of towns. And so the assessed property values across the state are not what the actual sale of uh, property values, what we're seeing. Okay, and they adjust the CLA across the state to ensure that in general the grand list makes sense for towns. Okay, it's also a mechanism to ensure that you didn't have listers in one town that tended to assess properties lower, but they actually were valued more, so they're not paying their fair share into the ed fund. All right, so that's why the CLA drops. Now, let's say you reassessed and the CLA increased. Well, that's great. What I would show you could be a tax rate going down, but you're now going to pay that tax rate at your new assessed property value, meaning your taxes still increase. I just don't show it to you because I have to show the CLA. Am I making there, that your taxes are going to go up either way? So if we assess, we, we say that they may go up, but it depends on the value of your property because if the grand list rises and our expenses don't rise, we would be distributing them over a different amount of money. That's so, true. So if your house is assessed, you got to play the good card. Your house is assessed <laughs> at 200000 and now yeah. it's 300000 yeah. You're going to pay this tax rate. It's going to be different. It's yeah. going to be different. But. All right. I just think I'm actually saying to you as a school district, we try to show that to folks so that I'm not going to take credit if your tax rate that I show you goes down because your COA jumped because you were reassessed. I try to explain to my towns when that happens. Like, yes, I'm showing you your tax rate didn't went down, but your house may not actually be reassessed at a higher value now. Um, so what's the yield? I've got a little slide on that that just kind of breaks what down what it is. It's the factor used to convert between per, per pupil spending and the equalized tax rate, it's adjusted depending on how much the state needs to collect via property taxes for the ed fund. The legislature has very little mechanisms right now that they can use to increase revenue into the ed fund. They're actually quite limited. It's mostly property tax, and it, the only lever they have to generate property tax in the statewide ed fund is the yield. The tough part about this is we never know what that is until late May, the yield, all right? So every time I talk to you about your tax rate, I'm saying to you, this is the best number we have right now, but depending on what budgets are approved and where they're voted upon across the state and what, what the you know, Joint Fiscal Office determines and advises the legislature that they need in order to, to fund the Ed Fund, that yield will not be set typically until late May. Um, and so just know that, because it's an important factor. So you feel that if that there'll be budgets that are voted down and you think that's why the yield may drop? Was that what you said earlier? No, so the How do you yield was dropping significantly yeah. because oh, I meant the Ed Fund was not, the, the, due to that 5% tax cap, yeah. the Ed Fund what the projection actually was, and I actually believe it's accurate, that based on that cap, it was going to result in a yield that put everyone over, over the cap. Okay? And so they're now looking at taking the cap out. Budgets have all gone to print. Right, exactly. So I will give you an example. I have a district in DSU, Stratford, who they budgeted essentially for flat staffing that they had, but they lost pupils in Act 127. They were a district that lost 4% tax capacity. Wow. With the cap, um, their tax rate was going to go up uh, just about 18 cents. When the cap is removed, it goes up 36 cents. Oh. That is a big deal in that community. It is a huge so we're going to probably have to cancel our vote and try to figure where we're going to either cut, cut spending right. and or take some reserve funds and put it in to offset taxes. I give that as an example to say why I believe funding will, spending will change. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, so finally, I have my, uh, a slide 
that shows your equalized tax rate calculation. And I put in yellow, uh, and you can't probably see it. Folks on the TV can see it a lot better. But if the yield goes to a 9,679 figure, which is what the last figure we had for the yield, um, when they were t House Ways and Means was taking testimony on this last week, what you're going to see is that your, your tax rate deduction and your equalized tax rate will go from three cents to about 10 cents. So that yield could contribute another seven cent savings for White River Unified District. Um, listen, I am not in the business to um, predict where the yield will be, but if I was a betting person, I would tell you that I believe it will be closer to this 9,006 figure than um, the prior yield that was released that was um, much lower than that, that we actually have in your books, that 9,001 figure. Um, and again, why? Because I do believe that Ed's spending is going to be adjusted. So common level of appraisal. Just so you guys know, uh, in Bethel, it was at 88.40% last year. It's down to 79.77% this year. Um, Royalton was at 85.44% last year. They went to 79.44% this year. I want you to know that's the only reason your tax rates are different. Okay, so why taxes are going to go up more in Bethel this year currently right now than in Royalton is because the change in the CLA was greater in Bethel than Royalton. You're a unified district. Your equalized tax rate's always the same. The only reason that the, the final tax rate is different in a unified district is due to that CLA. All right? I, and I try to say that over and over again because I, I worry about as we merge throughout this supervisory union, I don't know how well we can, we educated folks on that, like the why of that. And that really is the why. It's how, how much of a change happened that, that, that current year to the CLA. Uh, and then we have a little slide that just shows historically how your CLAs have dropped. You're actually essentially the same now. Um, it's just that Bethel dropped more this year. And then finally, We've got a summary on your implications of the tax rate. Uh, per pupil spending went up $629.74. That resulted in a change in your equalized tax rate of actually a decrease of three cents. Okay. Jamie, if you're telling me my equalized tax rate went down, why are my taxes going up? That last divider, which is the CLA, which dropped, which right now, um, with the yield that we put in your book would result in about a 12 and a half cent increase for Bethel and about an eight cent increase for Royalty. Okay? And on a $100,000 home in Bethel, that's $124.63. $250,000 property value, that's $311.57. And we broke that out in your mailers too. Now, if that yield goes up, because spending across the state goes down, meaning we change nothing, just spending across the state goes down, it would result in an increase of only about four cents for Bethel. So that, that's a big difference. For a $100,000 property, that's only a $40 tax bill. All right? We change nothing, just spending across the state changes. And I, I'm really emphasizing it this year because I think we heard Act 60 and then we heard Act 68. And I don't know how much even personally on my own property taxes as your superintendent, I always contributed to the statewide ed fund in that yield. Like it was in my mind, but the more you start to see the yield as it plays out this year because it's fluctuating a lot more this year, you start to realize how big of a difference that is. Okay, and in Royalton, it would essentially it would because their CLA change wasn't as big, uh, they would they would actually be. It's pretty much neutral. It's point zero zero seven. It's not even a cent um, on their tax rate if the yield plays out, of which hopefully it will. And 
I just wanted to chip in my two cents being on the board. So, you know, the last three years have been on the board with the school as well. And um, I think some things that at least I've seen during that time, one, I mean, Jamie's a fabulous superintendent. So we, it's been a long time coming. I think <laughs> we've, we've had many pitchforks and torches meetings with our superintendents in the past. And Jamie really has his foot, uh, his finger on the pulse. And, and he's not a, you know, he's not going to just tell us one thing, do another. So he's, you know, he's really straight shooter. The, the budgets that we have put up uh, last year as well um, have been, have been very uh, responsibly put together. And meaning it, it's kind of tricky when, <clears throat> you know, COVID money started flooding in and the state started saying, here's all this money that you can use to spend, right? And it's so easy to say, oh, well, I'll take two of those and three of those, and, you know, and, and all of a sudden you start growing, right? Um, what we've done with our budget is, uh, the good thing is, our unified district is, is growing because of popularity. So we have more children coming in um, from other, other areas, which is a good thing. So there are some things in the budget that we do have to increase because of that increase of children coming in, like counselors and things like that um, for services. But the rest of, um, and, and you've seen the last couple of years, including this year, that we had some significant savings in our budgets. And that isn't because we're sandbagging the budget. What this has been is, I'll, I'll take it this, in our community anyways, we've been taking that federal money and tucking it aside, rather than start, you know, oh, well, let's, let's have two more of these people, let's, let's change this around. And any of our spending that we have done is like one-time spending. So it's not spending that you're going to have to budget in down the road. It might be, let's do some matching money to take care of some infrastructure at the schools that's needed. So we've been putting that one-time money to good use rather than a budget that's going to carry you down the road. Um, now, on the, it's so easy for us, especially if, you know, right now we're looking at, you know, significant tax increases potentially, it's so easy to say, well, why don't we just take that money and just offset our taxes, right? And, and short term makes sense, but, but we also have to think about the long term picture of what that money really does for us and, and the aging of our buildings and things like that. So, you know, it's very easy, you know, we're looking at putting aside about $900,000 worth of, we'll call it savings, but it's responsible savings. It's things that, you know, we haven't grown into the budget that we can put somewhere for one time. Um, so we kind of need to think about that when we go to the um, the, the polls as well. Um, but I mean, I think the it, when we first started, we were we were very excited this year. We we started off with our budget, which is the same budget, we haven't changed it, and there was a seven cent savings, uh, which would have been for Bethel. That was our first draft um, before things started to move at the state. And what we were going to do at that time is we were going to give a two cent savings to Bethel, and we were gonna take the other five cents, which is, it's like one penny's $100,000, and we were gonna take another half a million dollars and put it into future projects for our school system. So that was kind of, that was where we were heading. It was gonna be a two cent savings, we were gonna tuck even more money aside for future projects. And then we went from seven cent savings to, okay, now we are, eight cents up just because of the common level of appraisal and the adjustments at the yield. And then, you know, and then it changed again, which we're up to 12. So it's, it, it's very difficult as, on our end is we thought we had, and we do have a very strong budget that we put together. And, you know, when you start thinking about how much of the budget you really control um, without taking, unless making it a detriment for the children that are actually going to school, there's not a lot of money that you can adjust in there um, without, without really um, changing the, um, uh, the quality of the education at the school. So, um, but I, you know, I thank Jamie for coming in tonight. It's, um, the, the school is never an easy topic. Uh, I think at the, the town meetings, if you look at last year, I think it, in Bethel it went up, what, a half a cent maybe or something like that. Um, you know, this year, 12 cents is a lot. I think we all can agree that 12 cents is a lot. Now, it's definitely not as much as our neighbors. Um, and, you know, some of those numbers I've seen as high as 40 cents um, in some towns. Um, so, but, you know, the governor was talking a few months ago that 
you know, percentage of taxes were going up due to X, Y, Z things. So, and, and school is definitely one of them. So, um, and we'll talk about the our budget tonight. Mm -hmm. You know, our budget is our budget. At least at at the town level, we control a lot more. Mm -hmm. There are some factors like you know some inflationary costs and things like that that we don't control that we have to figure in. But but the school, I will tell you, you know, one of the reasons I got on the school board was really just to to understand it, you know, a lot more. And, you know, it, it is a Albert Einstein calculation to figure <laughs> out what these tax rates are, that two thirds of those tax, two thirds of the calculation doesn't come from you, it comes from someone else sets it. So, and, and the one third that we did set this year was the savings and the two thirds that come from the state has been a drastic increase, so. I think we should also say that the, um, your school vote is from the floor Yep. This year it's in Bethel. I spoke to Pam, who's your town clerk, and she said there was only 12 Bethel residents, 12 Bethel residents in Royalton last year that voted on your $12 million school budget. So I suggest, as a Bethel resident, that you vote on your school budget, that you go to the meeting. And uh, I'm sure all that information is out there. So it's on the superintendent's website. Uh, we'd put it out, I think, on Facebook and Front Porch Forum and, and we stuff. We have child care this year, and we're providing a meal. I won't be with you because I have three votes at that same night, mm -hmm. um, so I'm in Sharon this year. But we'll we will have business office folks there, and, and your board has a good grasp with the budget. Is this a ballot? No, no, no. It's voting from the floor. You vote school from the floor. It's not about, I know there's a big a big change in voters in Bethel. Mm -hmm. and I'm sure they don't come from the world not the past. Have we thought about doing it? in both towns? Yeah, you can do a floor vote from both towns. We would have to uh, warn an article that the electorate would take up in regards to whether or not they wanted to pursue Australian ballot. Um, that would be the way to do that in both towns. Yeah, you have to take that up with the school. Yeah. Don't look at me. The school you board have to could take, take that, that up with the yeah. school. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a it's a thing to think about for sure because you do vote. I know that it is in Royalton. I haven't done that. Yeah, and you and do. I usually go out and check everything out and vote for everything. Yeah. Oh, just know uh, Thursday at six thirty is uh, we're having an informational meeting. It'll be hybrid in Bethel and virtually. There's another hybrid one that's going to be coming up too in Royalton. I don't have that one off the top of my head, uh, but it's in your mailer. These informational meetings are in your mailer. Um, so there are going to be two other opportunities to see a presentation similar um, coming up prior to that Monday night vote. And, and nope, you just you just there's a link and you just follow the link. It's a Google Meet. Nope, and you just get right in. And, and the process to go about doing that, and we have kind of informally talked uh, amongst ourselves in regards to that, because there, there, there are some nuances to it that don't really make a lot of sense in two communities, like like potential like signatures if you want to run, or, or if you're going to, like I learned two years ago, if you are going to run as a, a write-in campaign, that you need 1% of the vote in each town, not just your town. Um, so there's a lot of kind of little things in there that maybe weren't thought out as best when the article's origination were put together. Um, but the only way that we can change anything right now is that the first thing written in the articles of origination is that 80% of the board members have to agree to do something. So you pretty much need all the board members to be on fault to change any of the major pieces. You mean like if you want to go to Australian ballot? That's just to okay at the oh. board discussion. Okay. So the board <laughs> would have to have 80% buy-in. And then you can go to the voters about changing the articles of origination. So that that would be the path that, that one would take if you wanted to change anything. Like we were potentially just talking about, we have a, a committee out there right now just exploring how are things going with with the um, um, with the district right now, since we formed it, are, are every, is everything going the way it should be? Are there things that aren't working that maybe we should look at changing? And if we did anything majorly changes, we would have to take that same process. So, I know you can't change this for this time, but on the cover it says "in person vote," and then right below it it says "vote by ballot," which is misleading. 
Because you're saying you can't vote by well, ballot. You, you vote Australian ballot for your officers. But it's just for, for the officers. officers. For the officers. For the officers. But maybe I think that, like, no, if I, I if I read that, that, I would see that as like, oh, I don't need to go in person because I can vote on the budget the no, next day, and then you'd be that. sorely disappointed. Yeah. So Thank you. just clarifying it, maybe. Yeah. No, I appreciate that. Yeah, we will. Yeah. So, I'm I'm wondering if anybody has any questions of Thank Jamie you. in light of the presentation or or. Is are people like I am just feeling overwhelmed? <laughs> and know this, uh, I'm doing, and I've tried to push it out. And uh, Paul's comment once. I am holding yeah, these little did. Friday morning drop-in sessions at 8 a.m. at central office and virtually, um, on top of the informational meetings that we'll do in the evening, in case that's easier for folks too. I've got one coming up this coming Friday. Um, and we'll talk more in detail if people have questions. It's across the SU too, which I think has been helpful for folks to just get a little bit of a sense of the flavor of what does it, like how, how this impacts all of us across the 10 towns of the supervisory union actually is quite different. Um, and because it is a statewide ed fund and everyone's situation is unique. Uh, but I think it was hel helpful for neighbors to hear that and, and see how their neighbors are navigating this as well. So those, I've got two more of those coming up. And always reach out to the office. I will, we will set up a time to connect. I really pride myself in trying to be available. So no, I'll do that. You're not, it's never a bother. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Jamie. Yeah, thank you. Excuse me? You always explain so much. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thanks thank for you coming for tonight. coming. <laughs> You should stay off. Right? No, I, I, I didn't run this year, so it's probably going to be vacant, I think. I, don't, I didn't hear anybody else that was running. I don't know. So, I don't know. Doug's got a lot of time on his plate. That's just right. saying. Just throwing it out there, Doug. That's right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. It was very helpful. All right. So. All right. So we have uh, Kurt. Representative Kurt White uh, was going to kind of just, um, well, I, I don't know if this is, we're back on track now with, uh, I know the last year or two, Kurt's kind of floated in, in and out, just kind of give us some updates of what's going on in the legislative process in Montpelier. So is this, are we starting that off I think formally so. or? Is well, it? probably. He usually comes once a month. He's a good yeah. egg about it. So usually, are you willing to come back once a month like you did before? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, he's always good about it. So the tomatoes you saved under your seat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was planning on making uh, some spaghetti sauce anyway. That's right. Okay. <laughs> Just, yeah. so. Um, so you see I'm wearing these, and I'm not sure I'm going to, because um, I wear hearing aids. Mm -hmm. And this one died on Friday. Oh, oh no. no. And so. Uh, but wearing them, hearing myself and the echo, it, it was helpful for listening to Jamie because I could just listen to it. But I'm, gonna, I'm not going to use it because the feedback is too strong. So, but what will happen is, if you have a question, and I go, ah, you'll know what that's about. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, and, uh, and so we can... Okay, I'm up to speed here. Um, so, yeah, thank you for having me. Did, were there particular, did you want me to talk about the state piece? I thought Jamie did a, a great job on, I, I, was, I was a little bit worried I was going to have to lay out all that math for you. Uh, and so I was really glad that he had the opportunity to do that because he did a great job. Yeah. And, and one of the reasons why I originally supported Act 127 was precisely because I knew that it would benefit our towns. Because with the people waiting, uh, you know, again, it was designed to help schools that had more rural students, um, you know, because, because and, and so I knew that it was going to be a benefit to our town. Um, one of the, one of the things that, that Jamie mentioned was the, of course, the common level appraisal, that is what it is, right? I mean, because, and some of that is because the, we all know 
during COVID, a lot of people came in, bought houses unseen for an insane amount of money, and that changed, changed our, our entire tax base. And so the CLA is off, and it has to be. And we're, we're having it reassessed, and, uh, and hopefully yeah. that'll level that out. But that doesn't mean you end up paying less taxes unless, as you pointed out, right. you other things. I mean, it yeah. just yeah. means the numbers read correctly. Mm -hmm. it, so the CLA is the CLA. The yield, <clears throat> there are, a, as Jamie mentioned, there are a few levers that the state has, but not very many. And But one of which is, uh, during COVID especially, people uh, People still had their jobs. They were still bringing in money. Some of them were getting other relief things, but they weren't spending it. Like, you know, the, the money income was coming in, but overall revenues for the state were up. I mean, people were spending it, but they were spending it on, they, they weren't going out to restaurants, they were buying stuff. So it was sales tax, you know? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so actually state revenues were up during COVID. Uh, we, they brought in a lot more money than they thought they were going to. And they put a bunch of that in the Ed Fund. So for the last few years, they actually were offsetting some of the, 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 what would have raised the taxes. They're using some of that reserve money to offset that to keep the, the yield up. Um, and, and, but of course, with inflation and all the other pressures that we're all feeling, uh, you know, that, they, they don't have much left in that reserve fund. Uh, the most recent revenue prediction I heard last week is they do think that revenues are going to be up a little more than they thought they were going to be. And so there may be some money, not enough to make a big appreciable difference, but there may be some money that they can put in there to, to offset that. But the biggest, biggest thing is to try and fix this problem with the caps. Because the original idea was that <coughs> with, the, with the weightings, you know, towns that, like, like Bethel Royalton, you know, because we are rural, you know, we were going to get, our students were going to be weighted heavier, and therefore we were going to get more money for them. And so that was going to be good for us. Uh, schools that were probably more wealthy schools, so they had kids that came from families where, where you know, the, uh, as, as Jamie talked about generational poverty, you know, if, if people who come from generational wealth uh, are easier to educate because, you know, mom and dad take them on vacations to museums and mom and dad have college degrees and so they encourage their kids to, to read and study and learn and so they're easier to educate and so they, they don't cost as much to educate and so that's, the idea was that they should get less money because it costs less for them to, to educate those kids. And so certain districts in the state were going to see their, and, and we in general would probably think of them as wealthier towns. Uh, they, they were going to pay a higher, uh, they were going to jump significantly. Stratford is an example, right? Man, he pointed it out. So they were going to, it was going to be a significant leap. And so the idea originally was, well, you know, we don't want to be mean to any one town. So what we'll do is we'll put this cap on there that if they raise their budget, if they keep under a 5% increase in their budget, then, or, you know, then, well, if they have to go over 5% of raise their budget, we won't charge them for that extra over. That instead what we'll, we, we will, and if you don't charge them, that means... Somebody's As Jamie said, Somebody's everyone's paying for it, right? It, it spreads it out. But the idea was for five years, go on, edge them up a little bit over that time to make, help them make that transition. What happened was those schools and a number of other schools, I, I, I liked this. Um, it, was a, uh, it was an N, a VPR commentator made this statement, uh, uh, this comparison. And she said, if you have a weekly grocery bill of $100, uh, and, and the store one time says, tell you what, if you come in, anything you buy over $120, we're only going to just charge you $120. You're going to buy three weeks worth of food right. because it's only going to cost you 120 bucks. 
And that's what a lot of these schools did. They saw, they said, oh, hey, we're not, you know, we can, we can go 25% over, but we're only going to pay for 20, for 5%. That's a deal. Uh, and, you know, as, as Jamie talked about, like, the, our schools have been very good about with the reserve funds and being able to kind of make our own improvements, but a lot of these schools have not been doing it. So they saw this as an opportunity. Oh, we'll put in the budget a new furnace uh, for the school, a new whatever. And so, uh, so that really inflated it. And that basically is what the budgets that were being sent to the agent of education department of taxes were all gonna be really, really high. Uh, and that drives the yield down. And that means everybody's taxes go up. And ultimately, it, that would erase the benefit that towns like, like Bethel and, and Royalton were supposed to get from this process. So it, it undermined the whole thing. So the current bill, which is House Bill 850, if you want to look it up, uh, <clears throat> was just passed out of the House Ways and Means Committee. And Somebody asked me not too long ago, they're like, I never understood what ways and means is. Ways, is. ways and means are the ways and means that we get the money to pay for what we want to pay for. And so that's whatever you do through taxes and grants and other things, how we get the money. And then appropriations is how we spend the money, just to, to clarify that. And so the House Ways and Means Committee on Friday morning, uh, by a 12-0 vote, which means all three political parties uh, in the state of Vermont all signed off on this plan, which is a good sign, right, when everyone's agreeing on it, for this, to pass this version of House Bill 850, and it now sits in appropriations. And the, the plan is fairly straightforward. First is you take off that 5% cap. And... Uh, and so schools that padded their budgets are now going to have to pay for that padding. And that's why Jamie said he suspected a lot of towns are going to be dropping their budgets yeah. uh, and that that's going to then help the yield. And then they, but they didn't want to completely leave them at, you know, because what they... But they'd like us for them to, you know, to go back to what it was, what the original intention was, which is, which is to give them a little bit of a break, so it's not quite so painful, but not so everybody can take advantage of it. So there is a new plan out where particular, particular schools that were going to notice a certain amount of increase, not just any increase, uh, they. they they would be given like one cent off, you know, off their, their rate. And the idea is, is so that it's specifically limiting particular schools that due to the waiting, not based on their budgets, but due to the pupil waiting, if it was going to throw them into a really high tax bracket, give them a little break for, for a few years, and, that, and the break diminishes as time goes on. The, this is the part that appropriations and ways and means are negotiating is how much that one cent rate is. Uh, so I, so it, it's, it's a little bit fluid, but the idea is basically to, to for the most part, get rid of that, that extra, get off the, the thing from the cap. Uh, and then the other piece of the bill is, is a straightforward that all the select boards have already created their budgets and, and have warned those budgets and are, are now, going, if, the, if this is going to change, they're all kind of you know, in limbo. And so the other piece is to give them a, a, another month or two to, to rewarn and to and to So for school it. boards, right? And there's a uh, yeah. appropriations currently set at $500,000 to offset that cost for them. So, so those towns aren't paying for, for that. So yeah. I think you misspoke. You said select board, but you meant school board. School board. Yeah, I okay. Guess. Just yeah. to clarify. For, for the record, for, for the record, yes. Audience. You all have nothing directly to do with, with, no. with that. Shoot us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And so, uh, yeah, school board. Yeah. 
So yeah. I had a question that I, I think it kind of goes with the topic, but not okay. certain. But so recently, um, Vermont started to allow sports betting. The sports Vermont betting. Did what? Sports betting. Okay. Where is the revenue for sports betting going? Is that going to the education fund? Or I, I tried to look it up and I couldn't find where that money's being appropriated. Do you know? I don't a hundred percent, but I think if I do think it was, but it, I I don't want to speak, but I th because it's under liquor and lottery, and and usually there typically goes to the education. Goes ed I, well, I found it, you know, coincidentally that this was going up, and at the same time we were allowing sports betting. So I figured yeah. they were trying to offset some it, revenue there, but I couldn't find it. I tried to look at, at the state level to find out where does that revenue for sports betting go, and I couldn't find yeah. it. I would have to look up the, the actual bill yeah. as enacted, and, and that will say where it goes. Uh, I, at my, my guess is it does, but, but on the other hand, it, you know, they may, Ways and Means may have had a different thought on that um, and may have divided it amongst some I don't know. I, okay. If you want, I can send you an email. I can look it up to give you a send you. And, it, and then the last question, I'll leave you alone. The last question that kind of pertains to some of the discussions we've had at the board here yeah. when we were talking about, um, you know, uh, policing in our community yeah. is, is often uh, when we're talking about how do we police certain activities in town, um, and most, most of it comes up with the, you know, uh, drugs and things like that is, is that, um, the way the system works right now is, you know, they're picked up, they're, they're arrested, but then they go to the judicial portion of it and they're not reprimanded for it and they're right back on the street. Has, has there been any type of action at Montpelier to talk about either strengthening yes. strengthen this or doing yes. something better? The answer is yes. So the judicial, I'm not on it, I'm on commerce and economic development, and the bill hasn't, I don't think the bill has come out of the committee yet, but, uh, but there are a couple bills in there that are designed to, so part of it is, is that you, you know, person X commits a crime and and it's a misdemeanor. And so they, they just get a little slap, away you go, right? And, you know, we set a court date, and there's a part of the problem there is we don't have enough judges, and so there's backlogs of months to years of some of these courts. And so they let them out, and before they get a chance to go to court, they've had time to commit a whole bunch of new crimes, right? And so, so, that, so there is a bill in there to, to increase the number of judges and to somewhat change the way even that whole judicial process goes to make it easier to get those people processed. The other piece of the bill, uh, uh, I think it's a different bill, is, is to aggregate those misdemeanors so that it's not, because right now it's like, you're being charged, and, and, and the penalties and all stuff is this misdemeanor, and this misdemeanor, and this misdemeanor, and each of them are separate and carry whatever small, small terms. So what they want to do is they want to say, oh, you have seven dis misdemeanors, those equal a felony, or, or, you know, or that equals a bigger, a bigger indication of, of crime. Uh, so it's a bigger crime, not a smaller crime by aggregate. So that's one of the bills too, is, is so that you can take these people who are committing all these little crimes and actually charge them with something that's going to have a bigger impact than just let them, you know, okay, so you got seven days in county jail. Uh, so yeah, that, those are the two that come right to mind. I know it's an important it's a, one of the important priorities of the legislature. Legislature's priorities this year were housing. Uh, economic development is always, and that includes workforce development in particular, because we, we, we don't, you know, we need more workers to do the jobs we have, but we need housing so we, those workers can have a place to live. Uh, and then, uh, and then another one of the top priorities was public safety, and that's around the courts and the police and, and trying to, to make that process easier and make that, because, because you're right, there, there are, especially repeat offenders all over the place, there are not really seeming to be 
taken seriously enough. And so, so they are really working on that. Uh, and that's, so that's all in the Judicial Committee. And, and I, I, yeah, uh, you sort of focus mostly on your own committee until things reach a certain level of, and they start popping up and they say, so we're thinking about this, what do you think? And, so yeah, we're, and, I, and I just say that because we've had several instances in our town this year of individuals that are the yeah. rap sheet this long that affected us. You know, we had to break in at the town garage. You know, the person's got a rap sheet a mile long. We had a high-speed pursuit through town. The person's got a rap sheet a mile long. And then yeah. we have others in town that we're yeah. trying to deal with that doesn't seem like we can get anywhere because yeah. oh. just as soon as they get processed, they're back out again. Yep. And so I, I remember when it's I, I really starting it was my, to affect us. I think it was my first year in office, and there was a, a number of neighbors came to me about one of their problematic neighbors who they, they were pretty certain selling drugs. And I, and I actually called the state police barracks and it was just like, so what's going on here? Yeah, all the neighbors can tell you exactly when the, the drug deal happened. Uh, yeah, how, how come you haven't, you haven't been present to, uh, to, to intervene? And, and, and I got sort of a vague answer, uh, sort of a, well, we have to get there at the right time. We have to know their process. You know, we have to, you know, we, you know, a lot of them are smart. You know, they keep it in the woods. And so when somebody comes, somebody goes up, you know, all that stuff. But I was still like, yeah, but, you know, if, if, if you never drop by, you know, it's going to happen, even though everybody knows it. 3 a.m. on a Tuesday, a white van stops in front of their house, and it's only there for 10 minutes. It's definitely hard, I think, for, I, I know, um, just policing has a shortage as well, and yeah. certainly, so, um, but. 30 police, I think our state police force is down 30 policemen. Yeah, at least, and then I know the sheriff's office, and then obviously locally in smaller departments, and yeah. I mean, I've spoken to several, and and um, people, it, you know, and, and they just call Vermont as like a catch and release state. I mean, yeah. because, and, and I've spoken to the commander at the state police barracks about issues and he'll say, look, I can bring you in a rap sheet, show you how many times we've arrested them, but they're still out. So I think it's good that the legislature is picking up on, you know, on that and trying to, you know. What, what was that? The state does not stand behind the troopers. No, they uh, get more trouble for arresting somebody. And that's why they got they got eight cruisers behind uh, Bethel Barracks, no drivers. Yeah, nobody wants to be a police officer because they the state doesn't stick up for the officer when something happens. They're always wrong. They're wrong. They're wrong. So now they're saying, I'm not even going to put a badge on. Yeah, that's the problem. I, certainly, is part of it. Also, I think I think some of it's budget. I mean, uh, they are paying them. You know, it, 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 you got to pay somebody who's going do that kind of lifestyle, men. And so, yeah, it's budget. It's uh, it's a whole, uh, actually, across the state, state government itself doesn't have enough people to process. You know, somebody who says, well, how come it took me so long to get my, you know, whatever, tax mm -hmm. from the state? Or how come my unemployment insurance didn't pay as fast as I wanted? Or whatever is, is uh, you know, we have a workforce shortage in the state government itself, and that's and that's also a problem. So you don't have enough people, even even in the, the police hire uh, the Department of Public Safety. Even even in their department, they're missing people in the upper realms to help supervise or provide the support for those police themselves. So it's it, it's an issue. It really is an issue. It's also a nationwide stigma to be a police officer. Has a nationwide stigma at this point yeah. too. It's so it's I not. Think, yeah. 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 And I'm going to come to you so I can hear <laughs> Recently, I was told that if somebody has a warrant out for arrest, that they're not allowed to be picked up outside of court hours and brought in due to the lack of being able to handle them in the court. And I mean, I, I had not heard that, but I mean, it could be true. Uh, again, if, if they don't have if they don't have anybody to process them, you know, you pick them up and keep them in the in the cruiser. Uh, you know, I mean, it, it's it's an issue. It really is an issue. But just to have a free pass after five o'clock to run the streets with whatever warrant you have out is which is which is not right. You're you're, you're correct. Yeah. 
So is there anything else happening at the Montpelier level that that we here in Bethel should know about or could affect us in some way, positive or negative? I mean, uh, I'm sure there are. Um, I mean, you know, there, it, you know, in my, in my, in my committee, we're, we're always trying to come up with more grants and programs and processes to help, help towns like Bethel. Um, and, uh, you know, and, uh, and there are, uh, there's probably going to be a bill uh, that goes through to create a fund to help schools upgrade their their equipment, and, and because a lot of these schools are falling apart, they're all built built 1965 or whenever mm -hmm. it was, and and they've all reached the end of their life lifetime. Even Woodstock, you'd think Woodstock would be able to to afford to fix their building, but you know at this point. They have septic issues, uh, and and they're considering leveling the school and starting over. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, so there, you know, all the schools need money, and so there's there's a discussion about creating a fund. And so, the, again, Bethel School might be able, to, Bethel Schools and Roy Royalton Schools may be able to take advantage of that, and and uh, then use some of the reserves for other things. Mm -hmm. uh, there are those programs. Uh, is there any programs in regards to like um, housing um, pieces that maybe some of because we you know we still have several buildings in town that yeah. could be good prospects for housing, but I think those individuals that own the buildings may not have the funds to be able to get them to what they need to be. So is there any yeah. economic they, development money yeah. floating out yeah. there due to and, housing and or? Yeah, we emailed about that yeah. they, like they did last year and Kirk wasn't sure if they were gonna fund it again or not. There was a, prod, uh, an, a program out last year where if you owned so a building and you were gonna rehab it, you got so much, you and I yeah. emailed about and, it. And VHIP <clears> and, and, yeah. Uh, uh, and it, yeah, I mean, the thing is, is those programs were snapped up like that. And, uh, and so, uh, almost certain those are those are coming back, mm -hmm. uh, but but they ran out of money, <clears throat> and, and right. so and actually there's been, people have sometimes expressed frustration because it's still listed on the web page, and and people will, and you can even still sign up, and people are like, and then they're told, well, there's no money, and they're like, well, why did you have me sign up? But the whole reason is is because that puts you in the queue. So if there's more money that comes later, mm -hmm. you're already in the queue. Uh, as opposed to, you know, shut it off and everybody starts. So, uh, yeah, no, uh, for accessory dwellings, you know, putting an apartment on your house so you can rent it out and provide housing. Uh, uh, programs uh, to help renovate, um, you know, rental properties uh, and, or repurpose older homes, and get those up like you talked about. We have some of those. Mm -hmm. um, I actually, was it, was it last year? That I reached out to some of those people mm -hmm. and said, "Hey, you know, yeah. well, get in yeah. the queue." Yeah there, yeah, there are there are programs here, and uh, you know, and, and uh, for the most part, was ignored. Mm -hmm. uh, for, right. for what he was, it's unfortunate, but you tried. <laughs> yeah, but for whatever reason, uh, but no, there 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 is money for that. There's <clears> also <throat> a reworking of Act 250 uh, to try and figure out how to to make that. Uh, less of an obstruction for, for that kind of stuff, and especially, especially if you're building housing within a designated downtown mm -hmm. uh, or in this region. So, so you know, not so much uh, a housing development in, in someone's agricultural field, but rather, you know, to support downtowns to, to uh, do that. Um, and, uh, there is one. And, uh, you know, and again, money to help up, you know, uh, Second, second and third story commercial buildings <clears throat> that want to have housing upstairs, more money to try and help them do those kind of things. Yeah, again, housing is one of the big, big uh, priorities on the list, and and uh, all those things I listed: uh, workforce, housing, uh, public safety. Uh, you know, th th though there is no disagreement between the governor and the legislature on those that those are priorities and they need to be done. Uh, you know, the leg from the legislature's point of view, the, the problem is, is that the governor frequently says, housing, we should do something about it. Give me a plan. 
And the legislature's like, do you have any suggestions? <laughs> and he's like, nope, you come up with it. I'll let you know if I like it. Right? And, uh, uh, and I get it. It's a great political approach because if, he, if the legislature comes up with something he doesn't like, he can say, stupid legislature, and it's great for politics. But, but it's less of a, it's not always efficient because you, you create something and then somebody shoots it down rather than if you built it together so you both right. agreed with it. Um, so that's the, that is the legislature's frustration on that piece. Uh, but no, we're, we're, we're working on it. And at 850, I mean, as far as I know, the governor is also 100% on board with signing that in to, to eliminate the cap and do those pieces too. So I think you'll see this move this week. I'm pretty sure it will come out of appropriations this possibly tomorrow and they'll fast track it through the system to get to help the schools get that looked at. So I just have one last thing. I heard about it right before um, I came here tonight to set up is that the legislature is somehow considering monkeying with the tax sale process. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but I, I know <clears throat> but I know that VLCT executive director Ted Brady went and testified to the legislature because it sounds like um, in, in the little snippet that I understand, um, I'll have to do some more research tomorrow, but is that the legislature is considering making tax sailing for the towns a little bit more difficult. Hmm. And so obviously the process is difficult enough. Yeah. It's, it's labor intensive, but I think that one of the the key points that the legislature uh, needs to remember is uh, it's not a mechanism we take lightly, um, and certainly we need to collect taxes, you know, and whatever that mechanism is, we do payment plans, we do all that sort of stuff, as I'm sure most towns do. But what the key thing is the legislature needs to remember is they've already legislated that we the town collects school tax, and we have to pay the school in full by June 30, whether or not we got the money or not. So if they want to make tax sailing more difficult for the towns, then they need to think about the fact that they're going to have to either, maybe we're not going to pay the school in full by June because it's going to put more burden on the municipal residents because we're going to have to get tax anticipation notes or something and pay interest on money because we've already given it to the school, even if we haven't collected it. So I'm not, my guess would be uh, that people are um, too, maybe being a little soft hearted. It's not like we're throwing people out of their homes and that we take that lightly, but there has to be a mechanism at which some point someone has to pay the bill. So I just want, you know, if that comes across your desk that you, you know, thinking about that and that I'll do a little more research and maybe email you, but that, yeah. you know, they need to think about the big picture, uh, which is just another burden that it would put on municipalities as well as the taxpayers because we're going to be carrying everybody's nut if nobody, yeah. it's not like we force them, you know, we don't put people up for tax sale lightly, nor do we do it for $300 or the current tax year, but yeah. it's a mechanism. Um, yeah, I had I not heard about it. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll keep an eye out and yeah, I'll look and see. And if you, if you find stuff from the BLCT. Yeah, that, yeah, I can email it, you. and If you can just, uh, uh, yeah, I haven't heard. I mean, yeah. it, if it were in the House, there's a chance I might have heard. If it's in the Senate, I probably wouldn't have heard. Yeah, I'm not all. sure. I just heard about it right before. Like at the end of the day, I was coming here to set up and, yeah. and someone told me about it. I'm like, Ugh. So, <laughs> so I got to look into it. But, yeah. uh, you know, there's an old part of tax sale rule that nobody knows, which is about distraint, saying that if you owe taxes, I could sell your ATV or this or that, but I don't know if it has a lien on it. I don't know. There's yeah. a whole, that part of this law is antiquated, yeah. uh, but, you know, the majority of the law works and yeah. works well. So yeah. Yeah. I just, you know, seems like you have bigger fish to fry than monkeying yeah. around with the tax yeah. sale. But Yeah. One well, of the other things for housing that actually my committee weighed in on was, uh, and and I have to admit, we giggled a certain amount mm. because it was House Bill number 666. Yeah. And, uh, and so, uh, and it was, uh, it was a bill that is designed to, if someone is building a, doing a development, and they're, so they're building a number of 
of uh, housing units, uh, and they, you know, and they're and they're and so they're it's all new construction, and they're taking you know uh, someone's making a deposit. Right now, the way the law is written is they have they take that deposit and and they basically have to put it in an escrow account, and in case the thing falls through, they have to be able to give them back that money. Uh, and so then, in order to complete building the project, they have to take out a loan to, uh, you know, fund the construction. And so what this bill is designed for, and it's really for bigger developers, it's not for, you know, one guy who builds one house at a time, uh, is that they can take a surety bond out on the escrow account, and they can take a certain percentage of the escrow money and use it for construction costs. Idea. Well, surety bond is, is like insurance. No, I know. So, so it will, yeah. So, <laughs> as long as they, yeah. So, 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 hold the bond. so it's guaranteed. So it's guaranteed <laughs> that the the homeowner will still end up with the, with being paid back their money if they if they can, you know, if 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 they if things fall through and they need to be paid back. So, so their money is protected and safe. We that's a thing we went over. We talked to many surety lawyers, insurance lawyers, all that stuff. It, their money's safe. It just gives those developers a little extra money to build those projects so they can build them faster. Hmm. So, yeah. There you go. Two, two comments on housing. Yeah. One, there's a difference between housing and affordable housing. That's true. Uh, so whatever we're doing around housing needs to be affordable. And that's more and going it is more and more difficult as Vermont becomes a destination for climate refugees yeah. which we are seeing already uh, people here in Bethel who are fleeing the west and the south and so on yeah, yeah of course affordable housing is, is, is critical so yeah I know you have a agenda after me, uh, but I'm also happy to answer questions people have, uh, because I know you have questions. Well, we thank you for spending the time with us. Yeah, no, Good happy to see to you it. again. And uh, yeah, I'll coordinate with Therese about yeah. when next you want me back. Okay, uh, sure. And I will, I will give a little talk at town meeting as long as you all are okay with it. Yep. Uh, and uh, I'll, I think I'm talking at Stockbridge at 9, and then Bethel at 10, and then Hancock after that. Uh, so uh, I'll be zooming along. I'll zip in, get my little thing. Uh, yeah. Well, thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Kurt. Thank you, Kurt. Thank you. All right. And then uh, we have public comment. Is there anything that anybody wanted to bring up this evening that's not on the agenda? Anybody that might not? You go, Ellie. I'll just pick on you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next, I would like to make a request. I would like to request that when you are making decisions that affect the workings and functions of the Recreation Committee, that you have a committee member here to be involved in it and, and part of the discussion. That's my request. Okay. Um, next. Um, with the new su uh, survey, your recreation survey, that's in on the last page of the town report, I would um, I appreciate knowing how ha have you decided how to collect the information, assemble it, what you're going to do with it, how you're going to get the information out. Um, I'd like to um, be a part of all that. Sure. We just have currently, like, you know, the survey monkey of the day. You emailed uh, Denise had been in. I'd never done a survey monkey survey online before, and Kelly was out, so I kind of muddled through it. But so we're getting those. I haven't collected them. I'll wait till the April time. And anyone who's mails them in or drop them off, we have a big envelope. And then we'll do the same thing that the town did two years ago when they had a survey, is we'll just collect, 
you know, we'll add up the answers and then just provide, we'll give it to you as direct, obviously we'll give it to you and give it to everybody. So um, we'll just do the same thing we did last time, which is just add up the yeses and the noes and the ideas and, and put all the information together and then we'll send it to you and, and also, you know, publish it so people know what it says. And I did try to go in and amend those things so that they knew when the meetings were so they could come. And, and so far, um, we've had some online I don't know how many. I get notification that one comes in, but I don't go read it. I won't read it till the end. And then um, I think we've had a couple of paper copies um, that have been brought in, but so far that's it. I'm hoping that maybe on town meeting day, you know, maybe more people will do it. We'll do it then. And then just we'll provide the information. And there's no grand plan for it. We just wanted to know, you know, kind of what to do, especially now that the pool we got a fix there for a while and kind of see what people are interested in and and um, so. Now some people let me know that they, they've been able to do that survey, uh, monkey survey. Good. They just, uh, they've been able to do it several times, so they're doing it multiple times. Yep. It doesn't, it does, doesn't stop. No, I talked to Kelly about that the other day and I'm pretty sure she checked it out. And if you can't, because it knows your ULR number or whatever it is, it's got that down because I asked her about that. And she said, no, they might be able to finish it, but it won't go through because it goes by a certain number. They know who, not name, but they know who's doing it. So you can't go in and do 15 and 20 minutes and say, there, I padded it. Because I, I asked Kelly about that the other day um, because that was my question as well. Because Survey Monkey, Survey Monkey has a system where you can't do that. Okay. If it was going just right through the town office, but since it goes through Survey Monkey, it won't acknowledge if somebody puts in a whole bunch of. And money. I haven't got that many either. So there's, if someone did it 15 times in a row, no way. Because I'm getting like, I get an email that says somebody did it, and I've only had a handful. So, um, but I don't, I can't, I don't go in and look at the results. I'll just wait till the end because we'll tally up the online and add them to the paper ones and see what we got. Okay. Who knows? Hopefully it's good information for the rec area. We've been asking about it, about, you know, where they can only pick one or that they've been able to do it several times. So I just. Yeah. No, finished. well, thank you. Yeah. And I did try, I fixed those things that you mentioned and then there was hard copies in the office so people can fill them out. And, Okay. So yeah, I don't know. We'll find. Be interesting to see what we see with the results. So. Okay. Thank you for answering those questions. Absolutely. Um, yep. On that same subject, have we put this survey out for our middle school kids and our high school kids? Have we done it in the schools to see what? They no. Are? Nope. It's only gone out in the town report and well, I guess I wouldn't. I put it on the front <laughs> front porch forum and Facebook. So I don't know how would, I don't know how to get it to this middle school. Could we? I would probably just reach out to maybe Jamie, Jamie. or the, the principals of the school, but through their advisory in the morning, they can, they can have kids like go onto their computer and fill out a survey right then and there. Like they're usually all on their computers mm -hmm. during advisory and there's sort of a... They actually, like, they actually sometimes use SurveyMonkey in classrooms for different things. Right, so it would be really familiar to the students and I yeah. think it would just be a matter of getting the individual schools aware of what the link is and getting it. Like the so middle what schools... what call it an advisory? An button? advisory, it's like homeroom. Okay, um, thank you. But like the middle, schools, the middle school's homeroom. advisory <laughs> would be different than the high That's school's advisory. advisory pod or yeah, okay. and so it's like you'd, you just have to get it to the individual principals and ask them to... Share the link. Put it into the morning okay. advisory okay. slides. Okay, I can do that, That's a good idea, But that's Joanne. a great idea. Or just a paper copy to the schools for all those kids and yeah. have them do it during home run. Sure. Yeah. And then somebody could pick them up. Yeah, yeah exactly. I just think that they're the ones that use it. Yeah, just right. talk to Jamie about it. He'd be yeah. more willing to get it distributed I can ask. out. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I can also. It would be great to get their input. Yeah. Um, all right, survey. Sorry, I'm trying to write down. Survey. <clears throat> great idea. Man, that's Any, good. Yep, we'll do it. Anything else, public comment-wise? I know I talked to Teresa about this, but... I would really like the select board to look into a local tax, like Rutland Town has and list and stuff. I don't know what it involves. I don't know how the money comes back, but I think it's another way of getting some revenue into our town. 
Talking about a TIF district. And I think maybe mm. you could start by calling one of those towns that does it. Sure. Talk to somebody. I I just, I'm sorry. I, I'm interested in us getting a local tax, like a penny on the dollar. From, and that, I mean, I think it would generate some money. So. Yeah, it's like I said in the email back to you. Some people are in favor. Some businesses, like local businesses, may not be because someone may say, oh, I have to pay this extra to the town. Like Williston has a 1%, you know, sales tax, but different TIFs. And you can, the good thing about TIFs are you can say, I know towns that do them and that money goes to the fire department for equipment or it can go to a certain thing or just to the coffers. But I did print out the information and threw it in the um, select board box to talk about after town meeting. So I did, um, I did print that out as kind of a something to talk about. And I know it's too late for this year, of course. Yeah. Year, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I tossed in the box for after town meeting. But I did print it out and um, and because, uh, yeah, you're right, it's a vote and it's a process but mm -hmm. it's definitely it's a way to raise money that you don't you know that it's another way to raise money so you got a good point <clears throat> yeah um town meeting's gonna hear going on mm -hmm. um and just letting you know i'll be back on the 26th to go through the uh warning mm -hmm. in case and to see who wants to speak on on what article and i realized most of them are extra money articles which there may be people from the community who are involved in these various um, programs that will be here to speak on that. But as far as the select board goes, to get that um, in your mind. So I'll be back on the 26th to go through the warning with you guys. If I can be put on the agenda for that. He's warning you. He's coming back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll put you down next for the 26th. Right. Thank you. <clears throat> Anything else public comment-wise? Anybody online? If not, we're going to move forward with the budget informational portion. <clears throat> so um, like we normally do, I'll, I will go over this in like higher level. Um, and then if anybody wants to dive into a deeper level of a specific part of the budget, then just let me know as we go through that and uh, we can stop or take some questions on that. Um, so usually what I like to do first um, before we go into the budget is just kind of explain how does the budget this year look versus last year because it's always easier to compare apples to apples type deal um, or follow along. Um, and then just kind of looking over the history of our of our budget. So we, we talked about, I don't know, it's probably seven years ago now is, you know, uh, the budgets in the town used to be kind of up and down all around and and you know how could we better bell weather curve the um, increases um, so that we can plan to afford it right so so that we um, have better future planning so um, you know so what we started years ago was uh, we have lots of different funds now for establishing um, projects in the town over a long period of time. So buying a piece of equipment, fixing a piece of road, those types of things that we can do over longer periods rather than just say, all right, we need $300,000 this year because we want to go do this project, right? And then we don't do anything for five or six years and then we come back and say, we want $300,000 more, right? So now we're trying to plan it over a long, a long term. Um, so just kind of looking back, um, we established it, you know, when I first came on the board about nine years ago, um, well, two things. One, we we had um, looked at our budgets weren't responsibly put together, and that what that meant is um, we went to the tax payers with a budget, but we didn't always follow that budget. So there was a lot of times where, you know, we we drew negative budgets because hey, I, I know that they didn't want to pay anything extra, but we really had to do this, so we just did it anyways, right? And then figured out how would we pay for it down the road, which, you know, which ended up being, you know, about nine years ago, we had to bond to retire a pretty large deficit in the town. Um, and, and at that point, we, we established what would be a number that we could set our budget against every year that could responsibly put a budget together and allow for increases rather than have these peaks and valleys. So, so what we've been trying to follow over these years 
is what we came up with, which was a three cent increase. So we, we established that we thought that three cents based upon inflation and other things would be something that we could uh, use as a baseline to follow that individuals co could afford over a period of time. Uh, now, we don't always, I'll, I'll tell you that a majority of the time we haven't even hit three cents, we've been under that. Um, so two years ago, two years ago, even though we had a about a two or three cent increase budget, once the grand list had gone up enough, because um, it's kind of like the schools, we set our budget and then a period of time later, a month or, or so later, the grand list gets officially accepted. So there are periods of time where your budget can move while you're waiting for the grand list. So two years ago, we had put together a budget that was supposed to be about two and a half cent increase to everybody. But we had such a large movement in the grand list that year that we ended up having a, an even, it was about zero change. Um, last year, we had a little bit of the opposite where we had um, uh, kind of similar to this year where we had proposed <clears throat> a base budget and then there was a bunch of add-ons, right? Um, so the, the, the budget last year started off with about a two cent increase on the base amount of what the, the select board thought um, we needed for a budget and then we had about four cents worth of add-ons um, that were added last year and some of those were uh, to finish up the skateboard part, some was uh, extra money for the library, some was the playhouse, um, so those were extras that we voted on. The other thing last year is everything got accepted, so the, the base um, budget got accepted as well as those add-ons. Um, but then our grand list actually um, shrunk a little bit last year. Um, so the tax rate went up slightly more than we had anticipated when we put the budget together. Um, so for this year, what we're looking at, <clears throat> I'll just start with the revenues. Uh, the revenues, the local revenues in town, um, so for anybody, you know, a majority of the revenues are raised by taxes. And then we have local revenues, which are usually in the, $450,000, $470,000 a year, which is local revenues that we get from either the town clerk's office for, for um, things, uh, money that we collect from the state for, for roads and bridges and things like that. Uh, the revenues don't usually change much at all. They go up or down a very small percentage. Um, the revenues are going to go up about $4,000 um, this year. So again, it's not much of a swing um, on the revenue end. And then what I wanted to do is just kind of go higher level over, and then we can dive deeper, is, is the changes to our budget, and then what were some of the major movers, you know, up or down, and, and why did that happen? So right now we are looking at, um, with our budget, a, when I say net increase, so that the revenues are up $4,000, the cost is up $72,000. So the net, the net amount is $68,000 that we're looking for for an increase in budget. And that's $68,000. So for every penny, it's about $21,500. So every $21,500 that we spend as a town is about one penny on the tax rate. And I don't have it in front of me, I should have brought it, but one penny on the tax rate is like $25,000. $25 on a $250 house increase. So uh, we put that into kind of perspective. So we're looking at uh, about a three cent increase at the town based upon uh, where, where we believe the grand list to be right now. Um, and this doesn't include any of the add-ons that we have in the budget. And we'll I'll go through those add-ons at the end. So what the three cents what the three cent increase at the base budget um, goes for is, and I'll go through these, just like any year there is, um, well there's never downs, but there's always ups when it comes to uh, benefits and insurances um, pieces of it. Um, this year's budget's a little difficult to figure out because we had moved, um, so like public works even though benefits continue to rise, the public works one will actually show it going down because we moved um, uh, half a person from Public Works and we put them into the parks piece um, and then we made the parks piece a full-time um, position so the, 
kind of most of the money just kind of got shuffled from public works down to parks. Mm -hmm. um, but there's still an increase. I mean, all everybody's health insurance, retirement benefits. Um, another mover lately has been just building insurance um, has jumped up quite a bit. Um, or insurances that we have for the fire department and things like that have all been going up. Um, so it just this kind of goes in order. Uh, um, uh, some of the big movers, the two years ago, if you guys remember right, we budgeted higher for salt. Coming out of COVID, there was the, I don't want to say the salt crisis, but there was, um, we were all told to start using, you know, we used to spend, um, it was anywhere, you know, $70, $80 a ton for salt. And then all of a sudden they're like, well, you better budget $115 for salt because it's all going up, right? So we had budgeted for that. And it actually didn't, didn't change in the way that they thought that was. At the same time, we we put we started putting a little less salt on the roads. Um, so we've had a, a year or two to kind of look at the salt that we're using and, and adjust our budget accordingly. So you'll see that the salt went down from 90,000 to about $60,000 in salt. Um, but at the same time, when we're not putting as much salt down, then we put a little bit more sand down. Um, um, so it's not like the cost completely changes, it's just we're putting a different product now. Sand is much cheaper than salt, so anytime we can get away with putting sand down, we put sand down, um, as, as Doug knows, right? It's a lot, a lot cheaper. Um, the, on, um, you'll see that the gravel budget has gone up on the roads. Now, some of that is we have talked about for a couple years now that we don't put enough gravel on our roads, right? Um, uh, a piece of that is we determined that if we're going to take some out of the salt budget, then we're going to add it into the gravel roads so that we can add to our gravel. Um, and then, as we all found out with the flood and stuff like that, is we seem to be using a little bit more gravel than normal just because all these things pop up that we don't usually have budgeted. So those those are in there. The um, the under the highway rehabilitation fund, and that is. The money that we put in there for doing um, infrastructure improvements, mainly road, roadway, and we have done a, a pretty good job, or Teresa's done a good job in the last couple of years of getting some grants for us. So um, this year we did, uh, sorry, we had rebuilt um, the Christian Hill uh, 0.8 mile section there um, that was done with grant funding. So grant funding, depending on, depending on what the grant is, we have to come up with our match portion, which is usually somewhere in the 20% area. Um, we have um, we have grant match right now to do the Sand Hill. So we have the, the water line phase two project that's mm -hmm. going on. And part of that project, not only is the water line gonna be redone on Sand Hill, but then we're gonna come behind that and do um, stormwater improvements um, and road road improvements on Sand Hill. So there's some match money for that. Um, we have, uh, well, we have have had a grant match for a uh, structure grant, which um, with the flood, it went from one project mm -hmm. to another, to another again, yeah. um, to pay for it. So there was some matching money there. And then we have the Pleasant Street Sidewalk grant that we had gotten last year uh, that's still, I don't, was it a next year project maybe? That's or the possibly, project? that's a five year It's a couple year of years grant. out, but we're just starting yeah. to add the match money in that's there. So that's a five year. Again, yeah, we're yeah. trying to match our money so that we don't have to all of a sudden ask you for a large amount of match money. The July flooding, oh geez. So, <laughs> so we had the we had the 2019 spring flood um, and we spent 2020, 21, and into 22 budget paying for those flood pieces that we had done. So FEMA, FEMA comes in and pays 87.5% um, of what we had done for work. And then locally, we're on the hook for 12.5% of that. So we had, and you'll see there's an ERATH um, piece, which is our portion of paying our debt over a period of time. And we tried to do that in three years, which we did. Mm -hmm. um, and just as we were coming out of the hole, uh, <laughs> here comes another one. So um, so just as this budget we're in now, we just finishing paying off the 2019 ERATH uh, flood stuff. Now we have a new one. So, um, so now we're budgeting 
for the next two to three years on what we think um, that our portion of this past July flood is going to be. So, um, so that that piece of that that ERAP is for that. Um, it's still a little early, so we we were a little more conservative on this and put a little bit more money away because no, um, we haven't quite finished all the jobs yet. Well, their jobs are all done. They're I just finished, submitted. but. I submitted the last project today right. and I'm just going through all the last paperwork and actually my calculation today was that we spent over $73,000 just in gravel that yeah. in that that just that's just one that doesn't include all the contractors all that we figure we're at about uh, a million and a half, million and a half um, in that flood yeah. and so we'll be on the hook for 12 and a half percent of that and then of course what Chris is referring to is 2019, we still have to put in a Pinello bridge, the permanent bridge, and that will go out to bid this winter. We have a budget on it, so we have liked to think that we've paid the ERAF on it, but it really depends how the bids come in, and mm. we're looking at a, you know, what I tell you, two point, I say 2.1, 1.2 million, it's going to be a really pricey 1. bridge. 1.2. 1.2 million yeah. to one house. So. That's going in, and um, that will be so. Hopefully, we've covered the ERAF on that. But so. and, and then, like um, um, at one point, Gene had alluded to earlier in the year, is like we know that these events are going to happen, and unfortunately, because we where we live <laughs> is we live in a funnel area where all the storm water collects from the mountains and it comes into the valley. And here is Bethel, so we are the collection part of the storms and so we know that these storms are going to happen right I mean it's almost like clockwork every four years we get hit with one so the goal for us was to start setting aside some money in all these budgets so that we have it but we haven't gotten to that point where we can set it aside we're still paying for it mm -hmm. um, so and, and here we are again we're you know this this budget and and the budget next year will be paying those, you know, this this flood that we just had this this July, and in hopes that maybe we don't have another one for a while. So, yep. The seventy thousand unit budget is there a cushion in there to start that process of saving, or are you just covering? This is what we think it's going to cost for this one. That's, the, that's only a portion of what's going to take yeah. us two or three years to cover our nut. So no, it's not padded. Any more than um, right, but like so. Okay, three years. Let's say you have seventy thousand. So over three years, that's two hundred ten thousand dollars is our portion. That's what you think it's actually going to cost for us at the twelve percent of FEMA of whatever it is. Not it'll actually cost us one eighty. So we've got thirty thousand that can now be in a. So, no, it's just yeah. what we budget for capital. If we were to do that, we wouldn't budget it through ERAF. We'd budget it through highway rehabilitation. Okay. Um, but we do know for right now, coming out of the gate, we're like, all right, where do we think we're going to end up? Because I, like I said, I just submitted the last project today. I'm going line by line to make sure everything, we invoice it, everything out. So we we do set money aside like in, in highway rehab, but... And we did do more this year, like more gravel, and I've got a hazard mitigation grant going on on Gilead right now. And so we're always looking for money, but you know, you're a long-term resident. There's certain areas of Bethel that are going to blow out every time. That, that you have is just that it happened, it is what it is. There's yep. really no way of getting yeah. ahead of it. Now, now right. I will say we... we, we, have, to, we have to be reactive. Exactly. And, and I will say that the number that we put in there, again, we start this budget process early. So we start thinking of this budget in October, right? So at that time, because we were still actually building, doing work, <laughs> doing work, so we were trying to take our higher estimate of what we thought we would have to pay out and put it in our budget. And I, I would say right now it hasn't gone over that. It, mm -hmm. it, we no. don't want to say we aim for the stars, but I think we were more realistic with our number. Um, so now, will we have to ask for another 70 next year? I don't know. Hopefully we'll not. look at that. Some of it, it does depend on one project from 2019, the Pinella Bridge one, um, that we haven't bid out yet. And prices for construction stuff have been much higher in the last couple of years than they were in 2019. So probably some of that is going to weigh on that project because it's a very large project. So. Mm -hmm. um, but no, we haven't gotten to the point where we'd like to be, like Gene was saying, is start putting some money aside so that, make it up five years from now, we have an event, we can say, oh, well, we already got some money put aside so we don't have to go ask 
the voters right. for as much. I think we're but still, we haven't gotten there yet. No, we're um, still at the level where we're trying to, you know, find the areas that that blow. What can we do to improve those areas right. so we don't yeah. keep getting hammered in that one <clears> spot? <throat> if there's something we can do, and, what is it? And so. it, it I will say, in this kind of a backwards way of building your roads, is a very large majority of the roads that we had issues with in 2019, we didn't have issues with on this past storm. Now, all storms hit the town differently, so it's hard to tell. Like sometimes you get a storm that just hits North Road, and sometimes you have a storm that just hits Gilead Brook area, right? But overall, there, even on some of the roads that we um, did work in 2019 and this year, they weren't, most of them were not the same spots on those roads. So some of the areas that we had done work in 2019 held up, but the areas that we didn't do work on 2019 were the areas that, that didn't hold up. So there are improvements that are being had through the um, FEMA process, um, but again, we're still fixing these. It's new. It can take more next time, but yeah, the one down from it, yeah. the one downstream is now yeah. having to take the volume that it wasn't because that one will work. right yeah. exactly yeah. one now, just stems to the other. We do clearly, and I don't want to get too far off. We do clearly have problem areas that mm -hmm. we fix over and over again, and 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 we are looking at those problem areas to see what can we do longer term oh. so that we don't have to keep keep doing this um, and, and, and you know Doug probably knows where all of them at I mean there yeah. we know where all those little problems that every time it rains no matter how much rain it is we have an issue right there so and, well there's also too is in the town report which is an addition this year is a kind of an informational about stormwater about one of the issues is like on uh, Whittier has blown out both times well the water coming off from private property is just sheeting off and tearing out the road. We did rebuild Whittier, and part of that is, you know, people managing their own stormwater. Um, so what happens is, if someone has, say, a long driveway and they don't have it crowned and they don't have it ditched and they don't have a culvert, all that water comes down with debris, plugs our culvert, and tears out a section of the road. And um, so a lot of the damage uh, that obviously we sustain is water coming off from obviously other you know private property so Whittier is a good example of that because we managed to rebuild that mm -hmm. both times and um, but the water there's just no way to go the way that the road is set up and it's coming down and, and it's bringing stuff with it so, so so to keep on track with that so the last budget um, when it comes to highway equipment we were starting to budget for a new grader um, we still need a new grader. We do. Um, but um, instead of, um, well, two things. Instead of actually purchasing a new grader, we ended up putting money into the grader that we have to allow a few more years of use before we do it. Um, just because two things. One, trying to get graders are more difficult right now, just like trying to get a dump truck or whatever else we want to buy. But right now, the cost of everything just spiked. So, you know, did we want to buy a grader? Well, one, can we find one? And do we want to buy one at the peak price right now? Or do we want to hold off for a year or two and hope that those prices start to come down? Because the prices for yellow iron, as we call it, have gone through the roof. Um, so we decided to take some money out of our equipment fund to invest in the grader for a few more years that we feel confident that it should hold. Um, and then kind of wait a couple more years to, to hope that the prices come or stabilize at least. Um, so you'll see that last year's budget, we had some money in there for a grader. Uh, it's not in there for this year, but what we did is we increased the equipment fund cost because pieces of equipment right now, just like a new pickup or whatever you want to buy, is more expensive. So, um, so we're starting to um, bridge that gap of the difference between what things were costing and what they do cost now. So there's an increase in there. As you know, a majority of people that were here, you know, we had a sizable discussion about uh, our our local policing and the difference between uh, a constable um, system that we were budgeting money for but not necessarily using, um, and the um, sheriffs uh, uh, about having uh, protection with the sheriffs, and it was determined that we wanted to go towards the method of having the sheriff's department do it. So there was an increase that came along with that, which was about $15,000. Uh, 
Um, so that's in the budget. The rec committee budget is down 30000 about, but most of that was the one-time money that was asked for at the last town meeting um, to finish up the skateboard park. So that's why you see the, the drop in that. Yes, Ellie? Can I ask a question about a figure in here? Sure. Recreation, since you talked about recreation. Um, I'm confused on page 63. It says skateboard park minus 65,000 and the improvement fund, but we didn't use any of them. Huh? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. She's looking it's on yeah. page 50. Fund. I know. I just couldn't um, hear you. On page 62. Yeah. Page 62, under the improvement fund, recreation improvement fund, under skateboard park, it says minus 65,000. But we didn't use any improvement fund. Well, you did only because we put the money in there. That's where your $30,000, every time you had a voted appropriation from the floor, that's where we put it. Yeah, but so 30000 minus six. But you had private, private yeah, years. prior funds. Prior funds. Sure. Remember, you did it when you originally had the skate park. All your money goes in there that you fundraised all your... So all so your fundraising money went in there, your Marco Grant fund. given in there, your your original money that you got from the voters, and then you came to the select board and they authorized money, and then you went to the voters again. So we just have to put it somewhere. So all goes into the rec. It just goes into that one big pot. But it says improvement fund. Yeah, it all goes into the improvement fund, the recreation Why improvement Why does it go into the improvement fund? Because that's the only fund you have. Oh, it's the only fund you have for recreation. Because it's the only fund. It's the only fund that the recreation department has that is able to bridge the gap from year to year. Yeah, it's like your capital fund. So, but it's all accounted for. Because I give you that spreadsheet, that right, detailed right, sheet. So right. it's just one. You there's multiple, you know, pots of money in there. We do that with other funds too. You're not alone. We do that with. <clears throat> we need a collection place. So if all rec goes in your either fund 54 or 57, whichever one you are, and. Uh, then we account for it separately. So that's okay. all. That's my question. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So that you'll see the rec department is down, but most of that is is due to the one-time skateboard um, influx of money from last year that was voted in. Um, like I said, when you get to the parks, uh, in public places piece, you see that it's increased a bunch, but again, a majority of that was money that was taken out of the public works and put to the public, um, to the parks and public services as we move the identity of the person from one to the other. Um, the um, municipal office, there were some increases, uh, a majority of the increases are due to the health insurance benefits, insurances and things like that. We did have a little extra money to help with some staffing um, because we, uh, have realized that we often don't have enough staff there. And especially when you get into like um, this year with, you know, just the FEMA and and those types of um, pieces take almost a full-time person to just dedicate on on all the behind the scenes things like that. Um, the, is the health insurance overstated? It, it, it appears like, so 22, 23 was 85, Actual was 86. We were pretty close. Last year was budgeted at 107, and currently we're only at 40, so we're on pace to be under 90 again, and we're budgeting 115,000 for it. So, so, so the challenge... Say? There's two yeah, things yeah. between so, last year. So, so the challenge is that you have with the health insurance is, is, one, people can elect to take your health insurance or not at any time. So, so we... So with the um, staff that we have, usually we have a pretty good snapshot on who's taking health insurance and who's not. But anytime we get into a position, let's say we are looking to hire somebody. Now we have to, if we're going to look to hire somebody, we have to look for the largest um, piece because um, there's a big difference between an individual that doesn't have a family and they go on themselves or an individual that comes and has a family. And the average um, compensation for benefits is like 40 some odd thousand dollars for one person so normally what happens is we will budget the higher amount and then if someone elects not to take the insurance then then you would see that savings but the tricky thing is and we had we actually had that one year prior to you coming is um, we didn't benefit we didn't budget enough money and we were looking for two positions that one year 
And in the past, it was kind of overlooked that in the past, those positions were in individuals that didn't take the health insurance. And we had that year that both people took health insurance and it, you know, our, our budget was off by like $60,000 just that so year. So you're making some assumptions based on positions you're looking to hire for. Or, or people that... increases or hiring. Or people that we do have. Because sometimes someone might have the insurance and then decide that they don't want the insurance. But or vice versa. The spouse might lose theirs, so they have to come on to yours. Right. Yeah, the other thing, too, is the payment in lieu of insurance went up significantly, so someone in the municipal office takes takes advantage of that. The other thing is we only know to calendar year to calendar year what um, what the premium is, so I can, I can do the exact math for part of the year, and then I estimate what our increase is. And remember what I used this year. Last year, um, because the premium went up significantly this year, so then we kind of estimate for that last six months. So it shouldn't be too far off um, in the end, but um, it depends what the, you know, that magic of what that six months is. Because I know six months out, I can tell you about half the year I can't. It, it, it makes sense why it's higher than what is actual yeah. based on what you use. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. That was all. Um, and we had, um, other, under the government ops, Part of it, we had um, increased the capital reserve fund um, this year as well. And then you'll see towards the end that there is a payment in there to start paying for the water bond, um, which was $14,000 in there because we are <laughs> get to start paying for it. That's right. Um, so those were the kind of the major changers up and down. Um, and then uh, the board had decided that we. So most of the time we have a budget, um, there's always pieces that do get uh, voted in separately. So like the human services piece gets voted in separately every year. The White River Valley Ambulance gets voted in separately every year. So there's just some of those pieces that do get voted in. And then once in a while there happens to be a, a specialty item that might get um, added to it. And the additions can happen either at the select board level or they can be petitioned. So somebody could go and say, I, I would like to have this on the warning, and they go get X amount of signatures, and then we have to put it on the warning. Like so, the Playhouse Theater. Right, like the Playhouse Theater. So there, so sometimes, so often we don't have a lot. Last year, I think we had three. Um, so this year we had a couple of, well, we had more organizations than normal that had reached out for extra monies. Um, and, uh, so, for instance, we had the food shelf um, that reached out for $25,000 um, alone. Now, just to put that in perspective, and I don't have it right in front of me, but typically food shelf would fall under a human services piece umbrella, and our total human services piece is like $28,000. So what they were asking for is actually pretty much the whole entire budget that we have for human services. <laughs> So we decided that that piece would go on by itself. Um, and then we had the um, South Royalton Senior Center that I don't have in front of me either, but they uh, typically around $4,000. Mm -hmm. yep. Paul's just coming on. Mm -hmm. Paul's my human service guys. Yep. But they, they typically are part of that 28000 that we do a year. 4000 goes to um, South Royalton Senior Center. And this year they had asked for ten. So what, what we had done, uh, what we agreed upon at the board was let's keep the four that on human services and then ask yeah. to be voted on the extra 6,000. They, they requested four and then after they submitted and the human services agreed, then they looked at their own finances and then came and said, actually, we need 10. Right. So they had to petition for 6,000 more because they were given their four through the human yeah. services, but they looked at their books and apparently Either they, they lost, lost big, they uh, lost some funding. They lost a lot. Of, they lost so they had to money. come back. So that they had to petition for. So and then, that's extra. And then the Playhouse last year, the Playhouse Theater, and mm -hmm. Randolph had asked for a thousand dollars, and that was done through petition, a hundred percent petition. So they had gone out, got the voters to petition mm -hmm. for a thousand dollars, and this year they had done the same thing, but they had changed the amount to three thousand dollars. So that uh, anytime someone petitions it, even if the wording isn't ideal as Jean knows <laughs> is we have to put that right I mean what they petition for and they get the signatures for is exactly what goes in the in the yeah. warning even if some of the language doesn't make a lot of sense 
Mm -hmm. um, and then the other piece that we put on last year is so to back up um, three, four, about four years ago, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, the average um, we have appropriations that we that we have in our budget to go to certain identities that are not human service related. So um, one of those examples is the library. So, the, and I might be wrong on this. We typically used to give the library like $2,500, right? Does that sound about right? Which we then ended up giving back to yeah, the so, water. Yeah. yeah, so it was like, it was like $2,500. And then, I'm just, and then I can't remember the years because Couple getting years old ago, here. They went to, um, but then it doubled because remember you guys wanted some computers and there were some things that um, mm -hmm. IT wise. So we went to $5,000 like two years ago, three years ago. Three years ago. And then, um, and then it went to $7,500, and then last year it went to ninety-five. dollars um, So we had... No. no. 75? Seven, they Seven, went to 75. 75. Okay. And then they... So yeah. at that point, what we did is, is have the library came in and have a conversation of kind of, you know, what, what does the vision or what does um, the road ahead for the library look like? Mm -hmm. And we had a pretty good conversation about, like... For our size of the town, what should that budget for a library look like? Because because a majority of what the library, well, one, the library is not a town library. Um, and the library functions on, I don't want to use endowment. Is that the right word? But what? Endowment. An endowment. That's well, not no, the right it's, word. It's, but it's a, it, the proceeds from an investment fund that right. we split with another beneficiary. So they typically have a pool of money that collects interest on years that have high interest, <laughs> which isn't very often. So the, the issue the library was having is they were drawing more money than they were collecting interest on. So it was just a matter of time um, that they were going to run out of money. Um, so we were talking about, you know, what is the right path ahead for the library? And um, the discussion on a library of our size for our town would be something like $125,000 budget. Uh, to uh, based upon looking at other areas. Now, our just to put that in perspective, our library has a budget of about sixty. All in. Yeah. So so we're not even operating on one twenty five. We're operating on you know bare minimum. Um, so we started talking about how can we relieve the library from um, keep drawing money. Faster than faster than the um, uh, the interest rate, right. um, and the number that we had come up with last year was was to add another twenty seven thousand five hundred dollars, so making the total amount thirty five thousand. So of of the budget, thirty five thousand would come from the town, um, and then we would revisit that um, year to year. So um, so what what we had done is the same thing as. Um, is is budget again this year the seventy five hundred dollars and then an extra twenty seven thousand five hundred dollars for the library to be voted on and and I think we can all agree that at some point we need to find a what does that path ahead look like and what does that funding mechanism look like for the library because we kind of all talked about that the library should be a hundred and twenty five thousand dollar a year library not sixty or fifty. Um, but once again, this year we have it at twenty-seven five, so it's significantly larger than it was five years ago. Uh, but it's the exact same amount that we had voted in last year. Um, so th the idea is to spar conversation um, on the library and get more. Um, I think to get more people to understand that because I think a lot of people still think it's a town library. Um, <laughs> it, it, it's not yeah. Library, yeah. Right. But it is a public library. Right. 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 Yeah. It's not town owned. That's what it is not town owned. Yeah. That's that what goose people up is they think because you town owns. Right. Because you could flip through some budgets at some towns that has a town owned library and you'll see, wow, they got make it up hundred thousand dollars their budget for their library. Right. That's because it is a hundred percent town owned. Uh, what where ours isn't. So we're trying to kind of figure out what that budget looks like for our library. And, and where sh that should be going, but for now it would be funded the same. If if it's voted in, it'd be the f funded the same as last year. With the idea being, with the town funding, we're able to allow that investment account to accrue. 
rather than depleting it at the cost of like three thousand dollars a year. Which is probably I, three thousand dollars a month. Do, do you have an estimated? I mean, I can ask a town meeting too for everybody. But do you have an estimated duration that you would be looking for those extra funds in building the interest? So um, I think it depends a lot on on what. Um, how investment accounts do in in terms of the next few years, but I think we were thinking somewhere between five and seven years, five and ten years maybe, um, to see because what we were told um, that in order to generate those funds, we would need an investment account of um, probably around a million dollars, and that would take a lot, you know, more than five years, like. Mm -hmm. um, so, but we have a, um, we're starting a strategic planning committee. So um, we had hoped to do that this past year and that didn't happen, so that's happening this year. Um, our first meeting is uh, next week. And, uh, you know, give an idea of what do we want for our building? What do we want for our collections? What do we want to provide in terms of services? And what that looks like in terms of finances. And, and I think that's kind of exactly what we're trying to get out of it is try to help them out temporarily and also work together to figure out what is the vision for the library going forward and, and, and what percentage of that should be town finance versus privately financed. Um, and, and I think that we're going to have further discussions this coming year on how, how that will look so that when we get to the budgetary process next year, we can say, this is what we really need for ever or for the next X amount of years so that we can, everybody can start to, to really think about that, so. so it, it, with that library, since it's the same as last year and last year's was approved, it, we just need to remind folk, this will not raise your, your tax bill because you are already paying that. It's still, still going to raise your tax bill. It's not actually in the budget, so the budget's gone up, right. and it will. This is what it's going to be when we vote it in. This is what it will. Yeah, be. I mean, the, so the library will still still raise it a penny or a little over a penny if it's. Well, but we done raised again. it a penny last year. Too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Oh, right. Is okay. Yep. That was an expense we incurred last year, mm -hmm. so this is not an increase in. Right. Over what, they paid last year. Over right. what was paid last year. Yep. That's that's all I'm saying. I'm yep. not saying it's a, you know. Well, I mean, yeah, and, and, if, and if you look at last year, I mean, um, because the, there were some changes afterwards with the grand list that you know the the tax rate that was proposed and the tax rate that went out was was yeah. increased more. Um, so we're already uh, versus last year we have you know, a proposed lesser budget than last year's actual. Yeah, and we're not um, anticipating any growth in the grand list, so we're expecting it to be stagnant. Typically, the grand list is pretty flat. You know, it, it does not change much. And then, so, you know, when COVID happened, um, the year after COVID, we saw some significant changes in the grand list because of people buying properties. Zoning permits. Now, yeah. now that was kind of good for the town for a very limited time, but on the downside to that, like we're seeing on the school end of things, is that was not good because now it separated our common level of appraisal by that much more. Mm -hmm. You know, so what may, we may have gotten advantage of the town end, now we're paying for on the school end, right? So it's kind of a, um, a, a tricky one on that. Um, so that was kind of the high level. Um, if you look at right now the um, the proposed budget that will be voted on um, line item, I don't have the line item in front of me. Um, oh. So article I'm not sure which one it is. two. So article two, when we vote article two in, um, which is tricky because Article 2 already has like White River Valley Ambulance and it has the human services pieces in it that we actually you vote in after the fact. You but, add them into it later. Yeah, but those pieces that we normally do is a three cent increase to the town. 
And the if you individualize it, the food shelf would be another, uh, it, it's spelled out there, but it'd be a, just over a penny. Um, the senior um, center is about a quarter of a penny and the playhouse is about half of that because half of a quarter. Mm -hmm. And then the, the library is, is just over a penny. So you're looking at, if you add in all the alternates, which there's four, the four alternates, unless they get adjusted, that's an extra almost three cents. So if this year we vote in the budget plus the additions, the total amount could be six cent increase in the, in the total budget for the town. Um, and then depending on how the, the school makes out, I mean, right now we're looking at 12 cents. If those changes with Act 127 do help in a positive, well, changes are changes negative, are changes. Um, a less negative So way. if these changes, <laughs> changes happen in the bill that um, we were talking about, um, House Bill 850, then those 12, that 12 cent could go down to four cents, but, um, so if that does happen, then you'd have four cents at the four cents at the school, and then a potential of six cents at the town. So it could be a total of ten cents if all those got voted in. Um, but the way it stands right now with the school is you have twelve cents at the school, and then you have as much as six cents at the town. So you could have as much as eighteen cent increase uh, between the two of them. So. Um, so any questions, anything you want to dive a little more into um, in the budget or any explanation to any of those pieces? We do have a good worksheet that is on page 67. So, um, and believe it or not, we didn't always have that page. Um, I remember standing up at town meeting many times saying, how many pennies is that going to be? And nobody had an answer for me. So. Um, the budget comparison report, which is on uh, page 67, kind of breaks down each um, kind of line item and how much that impacts you um, per penny. It also will tell you about, um, you know, what the estimated, you know, based on a quarter million dollar house, what that would mean for you um, at budget time. I think at, uh, on our end, Services wise, I think we held our services pretty steady from year over year. The mm -hmm. only service that really was will ch changed was the policing services of going to the sheriff's department. Um, uh, a majority of our movers um, at the town level was the once again the health insurance and um, those types of premiums, as well as we did see some inflationary pieces like. Um, you know, materials and things like that that we're purchasing that cost a little bit more. Um, and then and then the other piece is we've had more 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 organizations that have reached out for funding than normal. Um, so those are kind of the, the big movers in our, our budget. So any questions? I think we were at 25 hours if the $80,000 goes through. It's 25 hours 25. per week. Yep. yep. It was good to see in your um, select board packet the pages yeah. on what they had done. They send that with their that bill every very month. Nice to see. That's super yeah. handy, isn't it? Yeah, they send that with their bill. It's not perfect, as Dave pointed out. There's like I-91 in there, so obviously that's not us. But <laughs> there's a couple yeah. of odd ones. Yeah, absolutely. Up and they were in. There was two of them in the office today. There's a deputy sheriff that's just starting um, who works full time in Woodstock, and he's coming on board with the sheriff's office too. So, you know, we've we've had a lot of positive comments about about the sheriff's office and their, you know, being um, present in town. And that, <laughs> it's, not it's amazing how that works, huh? <laughs> Last night, where yeah. the white church at oh. school pickup time, uh -huh. and I've seen them sitting, well, they've been sitting by the town manager's office. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's so interesting. Huh? We've been seeing state police officers much more often in town than mm -hmm. uh, We also had. Or just hang out. I spent in town. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. 
There's also a new, yeah. relatively new commander down there yeah. too, so um, yeah. maybe, I don't know. I mean, other than speed enforcement, has anybody had any dealings with the changes of sheriffs or anything positive they want to contribute or? I mean, I, I know I've just seen an increased presence. That's you know? all I've heard is people um, are happy. Of all times of the day, it could be night, could be day. I, I yeah. see, I see them all over, which is mm -hmm. nice. It's not like you can predict yeah. when they're there. Right. Um, right. They pull people over. That's right. Yeah. Okay, ninety miles an hour. That's right. You want us to close it for you again, mm -hmm. Doug? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We yes. can close it for you if you want. Oh God. But we're going to transfer all the phone calls to you. That's right. <laughs> so they'll ring at your house. <laughs> you can handle a complaint. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know they've been asked to peruse the um, White Church parking lot a little bit more because um, there are some drug actions happening there in plain sight mm -hmm. that the, the church is very aware of, and it's a little unnerving for them. Sure. And people going in and out of the food shelf to have... Mm -hmm. People parked in there, so yeah, that's good. There, you see them there regularly. That's good. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure they just used the Vermont Governor's Grant mostly in Bethel this past weekend. Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, the sheriff wants it to pass. He wants our budget to pass in March. So, mm -hmm. you know, he's you know he understands that you know being seen and showing the colors is helping. Yeah. Is going to help. Get his budget, get the budget passed, so that he can remain contracting with us. So, and, and again, like we talked about, those are some of the caveats to contracting their services. Is they'll be able to provide more hours than we contract using some of the state monies as well. So, um, twenty-five hours might turn into thirty or something like that. You know, because they'll be spend a little more time. And and right now, I don't know how many hours they're using right now. We we're kind of using up what we had in the budget right now, Doug, which I think is like, like 15, 15, hours, 15 a week. hours a week or something like that. But I've seen them a lot more than 15 hours, it seems like. so. Definitely. They also said to call 911 so that whoever's closest can feel this is they're only here for 15 hours right now. Yep. That if you call 911 first, either the state police or they will take the call. Yeah. Right. It depends. So it's hours to drive up. Exactly. It depends who's here. Yeah. If they're closer, they'll come. If not, yeah, then you get the state police. Yeah. So. All right. So, not hearing any questions in regards to budget. We will move on. Anything from the select board? You guys all good? Okay. Did not have a whole lot left on here. The budget takes up most of it. And our... Um, and our presenters that we had, um, which was great to have the school here. Um, so we had the public library's request to hold a coin drop on the 13th of April from 8 to 11 near the White Church. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? So you need to sign this. All right. So just obviously if it's uh, <clears throat> rain or snow, it has to be rescheduled. That's just part of the rules. But hang on, so we need... Uh, to sign this, hang on, so 2, 12, 24. Just, is that you, diagram is everybody always been available? No, just you, what? The diagram that came with that? Yep. And I've they're never proof seen of, it before. And their proof of insurance, yeah, the, at Lisa, she's pretty thorough. <laughs> All right, and we had the annual certificate of compliance for our Town Road and Bridges standards. Yep. <clears throat> you sign that every year. This is actually one of those things that helps with FEMA because mm -hmm. they were wanting... Have a good night. Good night. Thank you. They wanted us to... Uh, yeah, take care. They were saying... Uh, I had some emails about Woodland and that there was a, some 12-inch and 15-inch culverts and they wanted the cost difference. And I'm like, no. Because of our roads, bridge, and standards, we obviously... We already said we'd go to 18-inch. So then... They, that's what they have to pay for. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the many reasons you sign it. Okay. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. All right. Hang on. You can sign this. 212. 2024. So it snakes everybody's signature. Okay. 
same thing with the next one. <laughs> and then we had the annual financial plan for the town highways, which just shows your class funds that comes from the state, as well as any type of uh, earmarks or grants. And then you have to divvy up your budget between winter maintenance, non-winter maintenance, and pain. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. manager's report Thank you. if you have anything that wasn't left on here you want to go over any FEMA stuff or are you um, good FEMA'd out count reports so yeah just uh we all this conversation about the CLA obviously our um CLA dropped about nine percent and and because it's your common level of appraisal, it's based on three years of sales. So, you know, COVID is the gift that keeps on giving because in this year, it was probably 2020, 21, 22. Next year, my guess is it's going to drop again. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jean. It's going to drop again because you're going to have a third year of COVID sales where people are coming in and paying, you know, for more than the properties appraised at. That really throws you out of whack. So... Um, we do a sales study, the Lister's office does a sales study every year, and Mo and Judy obviously did the sales study before they left, um, months before they left. Rick Benson was reviewing it. We had some questions because once our CLA dropped 9%, we're like, hmm, can you, let's look at the sales study. Well, some of the properties, Mo and Judy made notes to have them opted out of it because there was some big changes, which Rick agrees with. But when the state did it, they included those properties in it. So when Rick contacted the state uh, property valuation review, they wouldn't even talk to him about it until we appealed. So Chris signed a letter on Friday, and I emailed it, and they've received it. So hopefully this week, they will actually speak to Rick about the contents of the sales study. So we're not sure it's going to change anything, but at least we'll get some answers about the CLA. Unfortunately... Our belief is that the CLA may drop again next year mm. because it will be three years of really COVID or post-COVID sales. So, but then in 2025, we our will, will be, our will reappraisal be will be done by July of 2025. So, you know, obviously then we'll be back in business, but it, it may just be, you know, this year wasn't. It'll probably be another great. tough year. It could next be year another tough year next year, uh, depending. But. And then, so we, so mm -hmm. in Bethel, we had started the reappraisal process about two years ago, um, and it's, you know, it's not a process that you just sign up and get going yeah. on. It's okay. you sign up, you get your place in line, and and then it takes, you know, probably takes about a year or two just to start the process. Mm -hmm. And then the process is about a year and a half process, so it's it's like a four year process. Yeah, so. So we were we had been talking about this two years ago to start the reappraisal process. I think we signed paperwork last year. Yeah, maybe. I'm I and forget. it's going to be starting this year. Mm -hmm. They've already started, haven't they? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. They're partly. Yeah. So it'll the the corrections or our new common level of appraisal information won't be completed in time for next year's budget. So mm -hmm. it'll be one more budget. Now the benefits is we're probably going to get hit one more time, but at least then. The, you know, the benchmark will be reset for us for the following year. But some of the towns like Royalton, for instance, that they need to do it as well, they, they haven't even started the process. So right now, you know, I mean, they're talking, you know, if they're going to continue to take hits, they're going to be taking hits for like the next three or four years because oh. just to get a firm signed on, to get them ready well, to it, go through the whole process takes time. But it's going to be more convoluted now. And now everybody's going to have to do it. So. Well, the state took over townwide reappraisals for some unknown reason and we were lucky we signed our contract just under the wire mm. so now the state is going to be mandating reappraisals Maybe and i think years. and maybe even the organization that does it we're not really sure yet because thank god we dodged that bullet but so it'll be a few years but somehow the for some reason the state has taken it over so mm. 
I don't know what that's going to be like. But. So you'll see a lot of activity this year with mm -hmm. that. And then yeah, if they haven't been to your house and they, they'll again, be coming. It, it won't finish this year, but it will. There you go. Yeah, oh, you didn't hear him. Yeah, really. So I got the German Shepherd. That's right. Go to the next house. So, yeah, so I think that's it. So. Julie's inviting you to come to her house yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And I have a doorbell and everything. Or, or I'll loan out the German Shepherd for a day if you need him. Yeah, exactly. You just have to feed him. He's happy. Yeah, he keeps people away. <laughs> yeah. So we. So yeah, that's it as far as um, how many this work. And we had the minutes minutes from the 23rd of January any any um, corrections to the minutes or are we good to approve as written whose name Chris no it's there is it yeah. oh, I'm on there you got me I'm on there I probably when I edit it maybe I fixed it there was a spelling. It doesn't show in the present. It shows that he called the meeting. Uh, I should have it under present. I'm I'm looking at the minutes that I printed out and put in the packet. So you might add that after there. the fact. Okay. And what was your, well, there was a what spelling error? Yeah. What? Where? I'd have to look it up. Well, that's not helpful. <laughs> that's not helpful. It's in there, though. It's in there. Hmm. I don't know, Gene. Verb has a D or shouldn't have a D or something like that. I'm looking. What? I don't know. I can't go search for that. I'll find it. Well, they need to vote now. Try clicking on the icon. Chris? Oh, I see. Have you already downloaded it? Mm -hmm. I don't know, Gene. I'm looking. If it already exists on your on your iPad, it might not let you. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see it run through here quick. Uh, I'm not seeing it. So not seeing it, do we just approve the minutes as written? Yeah, it's just a D. That's so not the end of the world. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. All righty. Other communications, we did have um, the budget status report that was in there. So. Yeah, and you can see I had some, <laughs> I don't know, people had some coding error some coding issues. Coding issues? Coding error, yeah, it was pretty funny, actually. A couple of them, I'm going through this, and I'm like, so it just proves you that I actually do look at it. Because one of them was uh, Morgan's, and I... I couldn't figure out for the life of me why, and I got laughing. I'm like, why is his gas budget so high? I'm like, there's no, who's tooling around? And uh, so I pulled it up and, and it was an easy mistake. There was just the invoice amount here for like 500, but the mm -hmm. whole invoice total, including diesel was 8,000. He just wrote the wrong number down and, mm -hmm. and uh, nobody caught it. So, so I'm like, what is going on at the town garage? <laughs> and then I'm like, okay. So. We had a couple of mistakes uh, in there, coding errors, so we got them all fixed. And then today I did make a journal entry to move $73,000 and change out of the gravel budget mm -hmm. into FEMA. So, so um, the gravels were still over by 23 still over for budget. the year. Mm -hmm. okay. and, um, so whatever gravels we do, we're going to have to wait until July. Or, you know, he's going to overspend gravel and he'll underspend salt. And uh, Gotcha. You know, okay. because we end up putting, obviously, we had a December, you know, mud season, mm -hmm. which, you know, cost us some money. And uh, right. so things happen. But, yeah. Okay. So, basically, that's, I accounted for all the gravel that we put down. And the, the, the bummer of it is, is that gravel that we used was at a different price than we're, you know, than we're going to be paying. So, you know. Okay. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> We'll go dig it out of the river, Doug. That's no, what we're gonna do. It's all on somebody's property somewhere. We just That's gotta, right. Just gotta get out of it. That's we'll right. get it under the cloak of darkness. Darkness. That's right. All right. Amen. Any, yeah. That's Anything right. else come before the board? 
Hearing none, just need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right. Thank you. Thank you.